Five, four, three, two, one, and we're live! Hello all! And welcome back to the Invicta stream! My Woo! name as always is Mr. Helen Guthrie and I am here with the one, the only, the absolutely delicious, my very good friend, Mr. Justin Thomas James. Oh, got the bite, there's plenty to go around. <laughs> oh, how are you doing tonight, Justin? Oh, I'm feeling good. I just feel like oh, stretching. Ah, Feels like you're giving yourself a self hug, which is totally I fine am. if you want a hug. Just come over. I'll give you a real one. Okay, I'm on my way. I'm See on my later. way. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday night. It is time for the Invicta stream to do the thing they do every Wednesday at <gasps> eight o'clock. We run role-playing games here on this here channel. Tonight we are running a special game, a story game yeah. called. What's the title of it, Justin? The title is called Basilisk. Was there a sound effect there? There was. You need to be cute oh, to listen okay. to them. <laughs> and uh, this was uh, one of the ideas that was sent to us by um, our patrons. Thank you very much for everybody who submitted a Patreon idea. That is right. Um, amongst all the other benefits of becoming one of our patrons on Patreon, uh, you will sort of participate in events like this. What we did this week is we wanted to ask you guys what kind of game you wanted to see. We sort of gave you a general tone. We were feeling horror. Isn't that right, mm -hmm. Justin? That is right. That is correct. Um, uh, but then we went to you, the patrons, and we said, hey, give us your suggestions. Justin read through all those comments, poured over all of them, and decided on one. And uh, we are happy to announce that the person who got picked for tonight's game is the one and only from Down Under. Am I right in this? RD? RD, yep. Okay, Mr. Rob Donaldson, my good friend. Um, the creator of Timothy, the mascot for the <laughs> <laughs> for the stream. Uh, and which makes it extra easy, you are going to win the most valuable post by being the person who ended up giving us the idea for tonight's entire game. Hey. That's right. Um, we still have plenty of uh, you know ideas that we take from the stream. Just we just pick them out, steal them. Some would say, uh, but uh, like for Tales from the Brood, where we do a multi game. But for this, uh, again, because we want to give the patrons a way to really affect the way we play and also contribute to our overall world that we're building or worlds in this case, this is sort of one of those really specific benefits of being a patron. So, if you have not yet backed us, backed us, supported us. Both. What's the terminology for patronage? If you, giving us back support. Giving us back Your support. Back if you if you have not given us back support just yet, jump over to the Patreon page. The link is in the description, and consider supporting us because it helps us so very much, and it makes me feel erect constantly. Mm. It's quite a problem actually. There's a lot of blood being drained from my brain. Um, but yes, thank you, Rob. You win most valuable post. Uh, a little bit out of order tonight. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like the video. Also, subscribe to us. When you press that subscribe button, six things happen. Number one, a tiny little electron. Blue pill goes to Harlan. That, uh, <laughs> and my <laughs> erection stays. Just rock solid forever. Um, but other five other things happen. I shouldn't have picked six. That's way too many things to list off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, that's right. Please like the video and subscribe to us. Also, You'll find out what the other things are. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter. We are at Invictus Stream. Uh, I said last week that we don't use it that much, and then Megan tweeted us right after, and it only took me two days to tweet her back, so there you go. Follow us on Twitter. It's probably a good thing. Uh, also, you can follow us at Invin uh, uh, Invictagram, <laughs> Instagram, which is at the Invictus Stream, I think we're called. And finally, the most important of all the importance, the Facebook page and group. The Facebook page is where you sort of get all the big updates, you know, who's dating who, who's who's died, who's getting born. Justin's almost born. I'm working on it, but it's so comfortable in this soundproof In womb. my womb. 
Um, but uh, the Facebook page is where you get all the big updates. The Facebook group, though, that's where all the cool people hang out. That's where uh, Brianna makes little cartoon versions of us uh, through an online generator. Uh, it's where, you know, Brian posts his latest update for his campaign or asks for suggestions. There's tons of fantastic community involvement going on in the Facebook group. So please consider joining the group. It is probably the one thing in my life that brings me ha That's not true. It's awesome, though. It's a lot of fun <laughs> to join the Facebook group. So please consider doing that. Uh, link is not in the description, but you can find it. Just go to Facebook and search. Right? Uh, yeah. That's the best <laughs> way. The Invictus Stream. That's the Invictus us. Stream way. Um, finally, for tonight's game, uh, it's going to be totally dark. So it is, of course, an 18 plus show. If you are uncomfortable with no no words, and uh, in, this, in this instance, very heavy thematic thriller? Terror? Drama? Yeah, more of a thriller, I'm thinking. I don't know. Who knows? I'm still not sure. It might be a slasher. It might be a thriller. It's a <laughs> horror of some <laughs> kind. Um, Maybe it's a Jurassic Park movie. Oh, man. Maybe we just switch it switch it last minute and just be like, this is where Completely. we're at. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you're uncomfortable with 18 plus content, then, uh, then you know, don't hang around. But still, do all the other stuff I said. Like the video. Subscribe. Um, tonight we're using a brand new system that I'm really excited about. We have heard many, many, many good things about this system. We have a few of the books donated by the lovely Bob and Aisha Lyle. Uh, not this book specifically, but no. we are using the drum roll. I'll let you say it. Chronicles of Darkness. Which, Which is... I'm, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, I think it's an updated version of World of Darkness. I'm not sure if it's the same system or similar rolling, but that's what it looks like. Woo! Yeah, party. I think this might be the start of the end of our switch into more role playing. What am I saying? I think this is the hmm. start of the end of not using systems anymore because I was looking at the system and it's really fucking good. I really like it. It's very easy, very straightforward. Yep. It is. Now, I am not familiar with it enough to give it full credit, so take that with a grain of salt that we're going to be playing this system. Um, we're going to be rolling the way we're supposed to roll, but when it comes to like the like core mechanics of it, the um, or I guess the less obvious stuff, like damage and attacks and stuff, we might not play by the book. Oh, we don't play by the rules. We don't play by the rules. We're the Invictus stream. We don't need We don't rules. care what people say. So, this is kind of our intro to the system, and eventually I do plan on learning it, like, to a T. Like, I know Dragon Age, man. But, um, yeah, for now, like, this is just kind of our way of feeling around and getting to know the system. Feeling our way around mm. the system, you know. Oh, yeah. You just got to... Get your hands all over that system. All them curves. All them curves and rolls. Mm, running down that spine. Yeah, right down the spine. Because it's a book? Ah, ah, ah. Ah. Yeah, that's right. Um, this is also probably the last, uh, at least maybe for the summer, of the stint of just Justin and I games. Actually, that's not true. We might have more Justin and I games. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> But uh, I'm really excited. I'm really liking these two twofers. Twofers. Two for Sutherland. Two for Sutherland. It reminds me of the olden days. <clears throat> the golden mm -hmm. days, some would say, uh, of just you and me playing playing our gameses over the streamses. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, Skype. it's sort of like... It is. It's sort of like a good version of instead of just playing video games, we're like sitting and playing this on a... On a Wednesday night. You know what I mean? Like, Justin's like, oh, yeah. we should game more. And then I was thinking right before we started, I'm like... This is what we're doing. This is you and me gaming on a Wednesday night. We don't have That's to worry true. about Joe and her nitpicky rules or Alex and his philandering. What's philandering? <laughs> philandering. What does that mean? I think, I think it's the opposite of philanthropy, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to Google it. Philandering is like trying to get people to l like you. That's not what he does. Philandering. Philand Readily or frequently enter into casual sex sexual relationships. With yeah, trying to get people to like. You. <laughs> Is that not how you get people to like you? By being, by having sex. I can't with them. think That's of another way. 
that's what I do. Um, it is philandering. That's not what I meant. But uh, I'm gonna go with it because it's funny. Uh, God, I'm not. I am not well read. Uh, speaking of well read, I just finished a comic book series. I don't know if you saw my post called yes. Lock and Key. Yeah. Very good. Highly recommend it. I will lend it to cool. you if you want to read it. But anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on that because apparently we're already 20 minutes late somehow. Um, wow, how so, does this happen? I know. Just when we're that in the mood. In the mood. <laughs> Could do the whole Glenn, song. Is it Glenn Miller? Glenn Miller, man. No. Glenn it? Miller, man. Yeah, it's Glenn Miller, man. Superhero from the 30s. I'm Glenn Miller, man. Beat your wife and play the clarinet. <laughs> I don't think he did. Uh, that was his shtick. I don't think so. No, but it's um, just when it's the thirties I just kind of just lump everyone into that. Be like treating women like they're not equal. <laughs> that's that's the thirties for you. That's the thirties. All right. But so. we're not gonna be playing a game in the thirties. We're gonna be playing a game in the modern era. <gasps> it's the first what we're time. in right now. Wait, to that now is the modern era? Right? No. Actually we're doing a few years in the future, so this is technically sci fi. For real? couple years in the future couple years. Yeah. um all right well i think that's that is that everything we need to go over in the intro that's everything we need to go over that's everything i need to go over do you Probably. need to go over over anything else i don't think so i don't think i'm gonna do a spooky stream this we weekend. should we should go over whether or not this is the last thing to go over yeah is this the last thing to go over let's go over that no. let's go over that yes no. it is okay we got i don't think i'm gonna go do this if i do a spooky stream this weekend it might be sunday night or friday night so check for that. Check, 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 check it out. What, 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 what's it all about? What, 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 he actually know the words. Say, Doc, what's the condition? I'm a man that's on a mission. Say, son, you better listen. Stuck in your what? It's an electrician. Science. Like a scientist when I'm applying this. I keep going. All right, let's do this. I think we're ready. We're ready. Roll it's the credits, be, Harlan. It's going to be a solemn game, so let's bring it yeah. down. <clears throat> Roll, Harlan. Okay. Roll the credits. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Just do it. Okay. Here we go. Without further ado, Basilisk. Solitary yellow strip, winding, bending. It guides you between towering trees that are illuminated in white light, casting shadows upon the ones behind in the night. There is a thick mist forming, and you glide toward it, following the bend of the road. Suddenly there is a screech as something massive appears in the mist before you. The brakes do not do nothing. You careen right into the thing, a crashing sound, and then... Black. You sit in a room with no lights. You smell nothing. You see nothing. And hear nothing but the sound of your breathing. Suddenly, 
A spotlight clunks on, illuminating a circle on the floor around you, but nothing else. A voice breaks the silence. It is a female voice, pleasant and steady, and seems to come from everywhere and nowhere. The voice says, Do you know why you're here? No, no. The voice repeats. Do you know why you're here? No, no, I don't. Now, shouting. Kitch! Do you know why you're here? <laughs> no, Start no. up. And uh, you open your eyes, and there's some drool coming from your mouth. And as your eyes adjust, you realize you're sitting in a classroom. There's a number of students around you. They've all turned, and they're looking towards you. And at the front of the class is Dr. Sophia Carnop. And she's standing there, tapping her foot with her arms crossed, giving you a stony look. No, Do you uh, know why you're here? No, uh... uh Sorry, Professor Karnop. I, uh, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't sleep. You're last here. Night. You're here to learn code, Kitch, not to sleep. All right. You didn't get a lot of sleep last night. That's not my problem. I'm here to do one thing, and that is to teach you the ethics of coding. No, all right. I'm, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I know it could be a more interesting topic, but keep your eyes open for the rest no, of the I, class. I, Will yeah, you? Yeah, of course. Who are we looking at? Anthony Kitch is 20. Athletic build. Built like a football player, actually. He's got broad shoulders, a muscular chest. And looking at him sit in the classroom of this coding class amongst all these other unathletic types, a lot of thin, gangly-looking, pasty people. Uh, he seems almost out of place, and that's caused a lot of sideways looks at him. Oftentimes when he's asked to borrow notes for days that he's missed, he gets a few eye rolls and some snarky comments rather than just the notes. But he belongs here, or at least he feels like he does. Mm. Uh, he's tall, again, like I said, athletic build, uh, thin beard, and uh, a sadness behind his eyes. Doesn't look like you get much sleep. And uh, at this point, a number of the students, you can hear them kind of snickering behind you and there are a couple whispers. And as people turn back and the professor gets everyone's attention. Okay, all right, well now that you're with us, we don't have a lot of time left, she says looking down at her watch. But uh, there is one thing that I wanted to talk to you about uh, in the last uh, a minute or so. Um, just for fun, uh, who here has heard of the game? And uh, I sort of look around to see if anybody raises their hand. And you hear a couple groans in the classroom, and people put their hands on their forehead, and one person even says, Ah, oh, Professor Carnop, why? And she chuckles and says, Okay, so a few of you had. But uh, raise your hand if you haven't. And Anthony sort of looks around to see if anyone else raises their hand. A few people do. Like, just kind of, like, looking around, like, oh. Yeah, and, uh, and he sort of does the same. Expectant that already these people think so low of him that it can't really change the opinion that people think that he doesn't belong, so. All right, well, for those of you who have heard of the game, you just lost. And for those of you who hadn't heard of the game before now... You just lost as well. I myself has all, have also just lost. I lost the game when I thought up this lecture, and uh, I'm losing right now. Um, the idea behind the game is that, does anybody, anybody want to explain? And the guy who actually cried out raises his hand and says, yeah, if you remember the game, you lose the game. If you forget the game, you're winning. Exactly, Johnson. You remember, you lose. And now that you know the game, you're going to be playing the game 
your entire life. Because maybe 20 years from now, you'll remember this lecture and you'll think to yourself, oh, that was the game. I just lost the game. So, you've all just lost. Uh, Dr. Karnop, what, what does this have to do with coding? And um, you see now before you, um, Sophia is standing in front of a whiteboard. And on the board, uh, it says Coding Ethics 101 and uh, Artificial Intelligence is this week's topic. And she says, well, I'm glad you asked. There is, uh, when it comes to artificial intelligence, there is a hypothesis that is a lot like the game. And once you learn about it, there's no turning back. You already know about it. So if I were to tell you about this, then, well, actually, it might even be too late. And she's about to continue when a, a chime goes off in her pocket. And she says, oh, excuse me. She looks at her phone and says, okay, class, that's it for the day. Uh, we can talk more about this next week, but uh, feel free to do your own research. And um, this week's assignment is for you to write anything about artificial intelligence. Good? Is it good? Is it bad? All right. And I want that about a thousand words on my desk or in my email by the end of next week. All right. You got it? And people kind of grumble and nod and get up and, and I start packing repeaters. my bag and I sort of sweep everything off my my desk and I head down to catch her before she leaves yeah and um, she's like packing her bag looks like she's in a bit of a rush and she says oh Kitch I say yeah I uh, uh, get the slides for today's class because you missed most of it I just I wanted to apologize I haven't been sleeping very well uh, in a long time <laughs> but uh, I, I I'm embarrassed I, I apologize and I, I didn't it's nothing to do with the subject of, of your lectures sincerely I just I just wanted you to know I've, I've fallen asleep in a few few classes if that makes it any better <laughs> and uh, she sighs and nods and she kind of slows down a bit and turns towards you and says I know I'm sorry I shouldn't have singled you out how are you doing by the way Ah, uh, I'm fine. Uh, you know, managing through, working through, I'm fine. But uh, I just, I didn't want you to think that I was, I was falling asleep because of what you were saying. It's nothing, nothing personal. I know, I know. Um, I just want you to know that, and she just waits for people to leave. I put on a tough show, but if you do need extra time, study time or anything like that, I encourage you not to use this opportunity but if you do i can give you extra time because i understand this is a tough time for you you're no no listen I, I don't i don't need that and honestly uh, you kicking my ass when i fall asleep makes me feel the most normal that i felt in a year please don't i i only wanted to apologize for uh for for making it seem like i was falling asleep because of what you were saying I, you treat me like any other student please all right is that all? Yeah, and I start walking with her as we're leaving, and I kind of say, that that game that you're talking about, thinking about it, and you said that it, it, it branched into AI? What's that called? Uh-oh. The artificial intelligence has officially gotten Justin, question mark? Or did he accidentally press the reset button on his computer again? Which has happened twice before. Just gonna pause the action right there and pretend that the that the teacher has <laughs> is just standing there like this looking at me. And I'm trying to contemplate how to react as I slip out of the room awkwardly. Uh, okay, Mrs. Carnop. Ms. Sophie Carnop. Fun fact, I know where he got the name Carnop from. It's from a friend of mine, my German friend that came back. Um, in the meantime, why don't I tell you a little bit about Anthony Kitsch, the character I'm playing. And I can show you some of his statistics. Stats. 
because, I mean, there's no sense in wasting time. He is a 20-year-old male, like I said. He has some vices, which I think actually I'm going to keep away from you. But there's a reason that the teacher offered a little bit of extra credit or help should I need it. And it was because of an accident that happened to him not too long ago. As you can hear from the audio at the beginning of the credits and uh, the dream that he's had, it has something to do with the car accident. Something that ended up changing his, his life in a way. But uh, because I don't know how much Justin has worked that into the stream, let's just say we'll hold off on that for a moment until he comes back. How many of you have actually played this game? The game. Because I never have. I've never even heard of it. But I guess I've technically lost it now. Also, I did not read up on Rob's post, nor the Basilisk, so... Oh, he's back now. There he is. I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, your audio's crackly again, though. Oh, brutal. Okay, one second. Keep talking. <laughs> uh, I was just telling them that I haven't read up on the Basilisk. Um, so I don't know what to expect with this game uh, when it comes to that, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else can I talk about? I don't know what to give away because I'm not too sure about <laughs> the game he has planned. I want to tell you more about my character's backstory, but if he if he's incorporating elements into tonight's game where I have an opportunity to tell you, I don't want it to be redundant, so let's not do that. Let's talk about what's coming up next week. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's talk about Patreon for a second. At the end of this month, which is just in a few days, you're going to get all of these notes for these campaigns, including tonight. So again, if you haven't backed yet, consider doing so, because you're going to get a lot of really cool information, as well as a video that we're going to be shooting, just a nice short video. I'm playing the game from now on. I don't know, if I was in, in, inducted in a, in a role-playing game, does that count the same way as if I was playing it on my own high school volition? Is that even the right word? I don't know. Um, should I just start singing? I need a backup. So I'm going to ask a few questions in case his internet goes out again, and that way I can answer them, because I have a fever. There he's back. <laughs> Thank God. Is that back? better now? Sounds perfect. Okay, good. Oh, man, yeah, my computer just decides to crash at the worst times. It's twice tonight. Crazy. Hopefully, it doesn't your computer. Do it yeah, you need to figure that out. Let's let's do this. I do. This. Yeah. Let's do this. Back to. Okay, so I just asked Carnop about yep. the AI that she was explaining. I just said, uh, so what? What were you talking about with this with this game? This this artificial intelligence. I'd be interested to sort of read up on it on my own. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I can't really explain it now. I've I've got a meeting to catch, but. Um, if you want to talk about it more, um, you can book time with me in my office hours, just like everybody else. And she oh, kind of okay. gives you a wink. Okay, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, I appreciate that. If you want to research your own, look up Roko's Basilisk. Roko's Basilisk. Uh, okay, and I pick up my backpack and I sling it over my shoulder and I head out into the hallway of the campus. And as you make it through the door, um, into campus, like the hallway is filled with people, and um, what does the school look like? Uh, it's sort of a classic uh, university campus. This is in Vancouver uh, that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm living currently, and a lot of the architecture in this area of Vancouver is sort of more classic, sort of New England style, so it has... Oh, it's in uh, British Columbia. Uh, Kelowna, BC. Sorry, British Columbia. I'm from Ontario, so I just put them all in the same area <laughs> as Vancouver. Um, but it's sort of classic architecture, almost like uh, medieval in a sense. So there's sort of peaked windows and high points around the building. The floors are all sort of stone and marble. And it sort of has a sense of uh, uh, heraldry, not heraldry, but like that, that sort of kingly sense. Uh, yeah, the halls yeah. Are, you know, sort of like Hogwarts in a way. Uh, and it's a, it's a smaller campus, but it's something I loved about it when I was considering going to back to school for, for coding. I saw this campus and sort of fell in love with it because it is very, 
very classic architecture in that sense. And as I'm walking through the halls, there are sort of little cliques of kids in the corners from different classes. And this is a, a polytechnic, polytechnic school, so a lot of heady people sort of playing, you know, chess in the hallways and things like that. Yeah, and uh, as you're walking by, uh, you hear someone shout your name, Anthony, hey! Mm. You turn around and you see your friend, uh, Harpool, he's walking down some um, marble staircases, uh, trying to catch up with you, and he's got a hand up. Wait up! Hey, and I wait up for him, and Harpool is sort of a heavy set uh, Indian kid in my class who uh, we connected almost instantly. I did not grow up with the best of sort of knowledge about media and things like that. I have no reference for Monty Python or anything like that. My, my family was very sports, 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 which is what brought me out to BC in the first place. And uh, it wasn't until I broke my leg and, uh, and had to sort of switch programs that I met Harpool and he introduced me to a lot of the stuff. So we get along uh, on a lot of the stuff that he loves introducing me to, including anime, which isn't my favorite, but I'm, I'm giving it a shot. I like to tack on Titan and I just finished it as Harpool uh, approaches and I kind of say, hey, I just finished Attack on Titan. I liked it. You did? Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if you were gonna finish it. I like, you did both seasons? I did, yeah, and I gotta say, are they doing more? Because it's sort of left on, I mean, I feel like there's more story to tell. It's based on the ma man manga, magna? Manga, oh. man, it's manga. Yeah, they're making a movie, actually, uh, and I think they're gonna make a, a third season, which is weird for anime, because uh, usually they just do one season, but, oh man, I'm so happy that, wh who's your favorite character? What, what did you like? What was your favorite part? Oh, I don't know, man, it's just... I don't. I don't remember all the names. I, I just. I love this sort of idea. You know, this this really tall, sort of these crazy creatures with the. Yeah. The, I, I watched it. it. It was good. Well, good man. I've got something else for you then. Okay. And he reaches into his backpack, and he pulls out a graphic novel. And he hands it to you, and says, "Have you ever heard of this one? And what does it say on the cover?" Uh. Lock and key, I guess, is the only graphic novel I've ever read. Perfect. Uh, no, I haven't. Is it good? Man, just read it. Like, have you ever heard of H.P. Lovecraft? This is getting so meta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lovecraft. Uh, he's that dude who does all the weird horror sh stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, like Call of Cthulhu, Dunwich Horror, all that stuff. Man, you're going to love this book if you, if, I don't know, if you like, if you like, ah, just read it. Just read it. I, I, it. I trust you, and I tuck it away in my bag, and I say, "Hey, you haven't steered me wrong yet. I loved all the Lynch movies you sent me, and uh, hey, I'm sure I'll love this. Thanks, man. Anyway, what's up? You were calling me from the stairs. Oh yeah, I wanted to see what you were uh, what you were up to Thursday night. Thursday night. Uh, I think Ben needs me to work, but I, I think I think he only needs me till about four or five, so I'm probably free at night. Why do you want to do something? Yeah, yeah, man. Like, I was thinking about going to see this this showing. It's like an old showing of, like, the original Star Wars on, like, the big screen at uh, at uh, Kelowna, uh, Kelowna Cinemas. Like, old-style movie theater. Nice. Man. Like, yeah. Star Wars, man. You've seen Star Wars, though, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, that's the one with uh, the guy with the red face and the horns, right? And the double lightsaber. Oh man! I'm joking. Of course, I've seen Star oh, Wars. Look, God, I'm talking about just... the niche stuff that you haven't got me into. I, I grew up with Star Wars. I know what Star Wars is. I'm th okay. I'm two years older than you. It's not like it's uh, it's something that totally missed me. Well, you are on a pilgrimage, my friend, and I would not be a good friend if I did not make sure that you had seen the original Star Wars on a big screen. Because I know you haven't seen it on a big screen. No, I haven't. And admittedly, I think. Probably the one I saw was the one that they edited where they put all the extra shit back in. Where like, yeah, you know, yeah, where, yeah. where Han gets shot but his head moves to the side the last second or something? Yeah, yeah, digitally enhanced. No, 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 none of that. Like, this is original, like... No, I'm in. I'm totally in. Can can I bring Sam? You think that'd be cool? Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, more the merrier. I'm going to be bringing some of my friends too, so... And I mean, like, of my friends, I'm probably the... I mean, 
the, maybe the most sociable of all of them. They're kind of like when you think geek, like they're like super geek, man. But like <laughs> That's okay. they're good people. So That's fine. Listen, I you know me. I'm not I, I am I'm just there to watch the movie and hang out and I mean any friends of yours are friends of mine. Yeah, man. Okay. Well sweet. Okay. Thursday night after you work with old man Ben. Well, uh, old man, he's not old man Ben. I don't know why I called him old man Ben. I haven't even heard of him, but he just sounds like such a I don't know. No, you know, Ben, he's the guy when we cross through the he's the one that's always yelling at us. You know, Ben, I've worked for him for months now. I told you all this crotchety old Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a good guy, he's a nice guy. After you work for that nut job, you come watch Star Wars, bring your little squeeze, and then... Ho, 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 ho. Sam is not my little squeeze. She's like a sister to me. That's... Don't. That's so weird. Ah, whatever, man. All right, just come watch a movie with us. Well, not if you're going to be weird about it. Hold on. If I bring Sam, are you going to be weird about it? Uh, Don't say anything like that, please. Okay, fine, all right. All right, I won't be weird about it, man. <laughs> all right, I just want you to come watch Star Wars. Fine, but if you are weird about it, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to tell Emma. No. I'm going to tell Emma what you think no. about her. Yeah. No. Yeah, so don't make it no. awkward to me then, and I won't make it awkward for you. It's that easy. And by this point, the hallway's pretty much cleared up, and he says, okay, i got to get to class. See you Thursday. And I won't be weird, I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of, ooh. And for a second, I get a shooting pain up my leg, the one that I broke last year. And I'm sort of, I always walk with a limp now. And I sort of just grab it. And it sort of seizes a little bit like a Charlie horse. And he stops, oh. turning away, and says, hey, like. No, 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 no. Okay? It's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally fine. I don't, okay. you know me. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. See ya. And he kind of dodges away uh, as he looks at his yeah. phone. Yeah, and I sort of walk normally around the corner, and the minute I'm out of the corner I sort of keel over in pain. <sighs> ah, fuck. And, and as you're kind of... Yeah, go on. I try really hard to hide how much the accident has affected me uh, mentally and physically. It, it comes in the form of making sure my teachers deal with me normal, making sure my friends act normal around me, and trying to hide as much as I can the moments that I kind of am reminded physically about the pain that I had to go through. And I find a quiet corner and I just feel that pain as like tears sort of roll from my eyes a bit. Oh, fuck. And I stand up after the moment passes. And by this point, the hall is completely empty. You're by yourself. And um, this was... um, it's the beginning of spring, and um, the class that you attended was uh, one of the later classes, and it looks like the sun has mostly gone down today, um, and it's dark, getting dark in the hallways as the dim lights of the old-style campus are illuminating the hall. Yeah, and uh, I sort of stand up and I swing the pack over my shoulder again and I start heading towards the large double doors of the exit um, and it's sort of bathed in the soft orange light of that setting sun like you said and I stop by my locker and I open it and uh, I look around just to sort of make sure no one's no one's really watching and I I want you to roll I want you to roll for me fantastic uh, roll a oh that would be Wits. Okay. And uh, it's a 1d10? Yeah, it's a 1d10. So you're going to succeed on an 8, 9, or a 10. Okay. Nope, I do not succeed. So I kind of look around pretty poorly, just sort of side to side. And I. And I take down uh, a book, and behind the book is uh, a letter. And it's sort of folded, and it's been folded a number of times. And I take the letter out, and I kind of open it, and I just begin reading it. And it says, Dear Anthony. And it's a love letter. And I get a few lines in, and I shake my head, and I close it. And I tuck it back out behind my book, and I slide the book back into place. And I shut shut the locker 
you start making your way home. And it's a dark, misty BC night. You can see just barely in the, in the twilight the, the peaks of the mountains that surround you and the, the tall pine trees all around the area. And um, I want you to describe the walk home. I refuse to drive anymore. Uh, I w was never big on driving before, but now, uh, once I'm better, I'm planning on biking. I, I don't have a bike yet. I'm, I, I'm trying to work for Ben to sort of afford getting a nice one. Uh, but right now, yeah. So I, I head outside in the setting sun, and again, like you said, past the trees. and I begin walking, thinking about the letter I was just reading and thinking about the classroom. And I feel so bad for Miss Carnup, and I kind of think... You know, I'll probably shoot her another email when I get home just to say, again, so sorry for this, and I'll try to get a handle on my AI assignment. A thousand words, she said. That's not too bad. It's a thousand words, not a thousand pages, right? Yep. A thousand words. A thousand words. Not a thousand, thousand pages. A thousand words, thousand, not that bad at all. That's like a couple paragraphs. A thousand paragraphs. one word paid. <laughs> so, I, uh, so I'm walking home, and I take sort of a, a unique way home, because most of the time, as the crow flies, getting home is not that bad. But I found as of late, especially in the springtime, I love going through, there's this beautiful ravine next to Ben's. And Ben Edwards owns a large tract of land between my apartment complex that I'm living and the school that I'm attending. And because the apartment complex is sort of student housing, there's a lot of other kids there, so a lot of them cut through Ben's. But most of them don't cut through the ravine because, again, as the crow flies, it's quicker to just go across a few parking lots. But on a day like today, and, and especially as of late, um, I want to take advantage of being able to walk again. So... I take an extra moment and always now head through the ravine. And the ravine is a beautiful, almost picturesque valley with, with soft sort of stone-laden pathways, but all natural over time. There's a, there's a small babbling brook that runs to the right of it when you're coming home. And the way that the sun cuts through the trees just casts these stark shadows along the pathway. There's a point where it ends up becoming sort of... Uh, an, a once ancient riverbed and it's sort of soft beaten down sand uh, that's become sort of more brittle and uh, in, even when it's wet it doesn't get mucky which is just beautiful and as I'm walking through the ravine and thinking about emailing Karnop I'm sort of putting the words together in my brain and then I kind of dismiss it and say you know I'm sure she probably feels the same way as me, tired about having people constantly over-apologize for things or over-explain things. So I shake it from my head and I continue on my way home. And you have a thought, uh, you have a thought, and uh, it is that, what was it, two months ago? Or was it one month ago, where those two runners were uh, mauled to death in the woods? <sighs> Yeah, it was like a month and a half ago. Mm. Huh. Yeah. And the All thought sudden, sort of leaves my head as quickly as it came. The woods seem a little bit darker all of a sudden. And the sounds of your footsteps start sounding a little bit more crisp as you step on the twigs and the pines and the sound of the brook starts to kind of irritate you and it kind of fills your head with its sound. A sh and I sort of try to shake it from my head and I reach in my pocket and pull out my earbuds and I put them in to try to put on some music. What do you put on? Um, I open my phone and I put on Clay Pigeons by Blaze Foley. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, Clay Pigeons starts playing in your uh, headphones and you make your way. That starts playing in my headphones.
Oh, it's a little loud. It's a little loud. Is it really loud? Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. It's so tough to figure out how loud it is. It's really hard to gauge. Um, yeah, so uh, you continue walking through the woods, the momentary moment, uh, the moment of slight panic um, washing away, and you kind of give yourself up to the, the music. And you make your way through the woods, and there aren't any issues. You don't run into any cougars or anything. And you get back to the student housing complex and make your way inside, back to your dorm. My dorm is on the third floor, and again, when I, I've lived here for a number of years now, before and after the accident. Before the accident, this was probably one of the best parts of my day, getting to come home. I was at a different campus at the time, so it was a much farther trek, but, but I mean, coming back to a place like this with all the other athletes and all the other girlfriends and all the other lively parties going on was just the best. People would be stopping me in the halls, tossing me beers, they'd be <laughs> returning things that I've left over at their apartments, you know, mm. boxers and stuff like that. Um, but now, coming back to the apartment complex is just sort of the worst part of my day. Everyone looks at me different. Some people I can see judging me, wishing things had been different. I do too, but... And as I kind of come in, I keep my head down now. I tuck my baseball hat down as I go to the mail to check to make sure I don't have any outstanding payment receipts or whatever, or payment bills coming in. And standing next to me is a young girl that I recognize from a party a few years ago, and I just try desperately not to make eye contact with her, but I can see her head sort of turning towards me. And I just keep trying to keep my head down. And, of course, she turns towards you and says, Anthony? Oh, uh, uh, hey. Oh my god. I thought I recognized you. Are you in this dorm too? Yeah. And I'm just trying oh. to get my key and it's sort of sticking into the stupid lock. Here, let me let me help. Let me. No, no, it's 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 okay. It's okay. I, I don't I don't need help. Oh, jeez. Okay, fine. Don't see you later. It's not. And I stop her as she goes to her. Hold hold on. It's not. I just. I don't. I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't need help. I just. Uh, I I can do it myself. Thank you. How are, how are you? How are you doing? Are you doing okay? Yeah, and you can tell by the look on her face that. Uh, she's still really weirded out and you think her name is Rebecca I'm gonna take a shot <laughs> yeah let me say I, I'm sorry it's it's Rebecca right oh my god no it's Candace and she turns around and she walks away sorry Candace as the door shuts and I turn around and I get the key works perfectly this time, of course. And I open it up and I take my mail out and I shut it. And I walk up the stairs and I realize that, I mean, so much of this is my, you know, feelings about how they must think of me. And I realize day by day that it's, it's probably that so many of my actions have painted me in a way, in a deserved way. So as much as I hate the way that they might treat me and make me feel, it's really my own fault. And it just frustrates me as I walk up the stairs, again, sort of savoring my leg with each step. And uh, you finally make it up to uh, your floor, the third floor, and your leg is just throbbing. You can't wait to get back and sit down in your chair. Uh, yeah. And I, again, get my key, really hoping that Mark down the hall doesn't hear me coming in because he always, for some reason, wants to fucking chat. And I think a lot of my feelings about being treated differently come from Mark, who's a sweet guy. He plays on the hockey team at my old school, and I know he tries to do his best. He's this hardcore Christian. He just, he's, from the minute I came home, he never made me feel guilty about anything. He never made me feel bad about anything. He's always, hey, dude, how's it going, dude? Here, you want to hang out, dude? Here's this, 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 this. But, you know, he just, it's just too much. He's, he, he is the reason I feel so babied 
and I, I have yet to snap at him, and I hope never to because he's just the softest guy ever, despite being a hockey player. And I just hope as I turn my keys and it clicks, and I go inside and I remove them and I shut the door softly. And as you're shutting the door, um, you see a note on the door. Oh, and I grab it and I shut the door and I lean on the back of the door and I read it. And it says, hey dude, came by earlier, you weren't there. I was gonna drop off a casserole I made in the microwave. I know microwave casserole, not so great, but uh, still tastes pretty good. All right, man, swing on by whenever you want it. I'll uh, get you a beer. And I take the oh. note and I put it on, and I, as I walk in, again, limping, I put the note on my counter with about six other notes from Mark <laughs> over the past two weeks. <laughs> Just past or two months, I should say. Just different random notes. Just one that's just like a smiley face, and and I can't hate him. I mean, again, he's so nice. There's there's nothing to hate about the guy. It's just, it's tough. And as I enter my living room, I mean, the the curtains are drawn. I was upgraded to sort of a a single dwelling the minute, uh, not the minute, but I should say after the accident. And uh, since then, I've, I've had this place and. It's depressing to look at, to be honest. The curtains are drawn, and again, there's pizza boxes sort of left out everywhere. Every once in a while, I go through a phase where I'll kick myself into gear, and I'll say, okay, let's start eating healthy. Let's start being a little better. We'll clean this place, and that lasts maybe a week. And then it ends up getting back. It's not a shit heap, but it definitely needs a, a good change. What about your computer? Computer is sort of where my time is spent now it's in my bedroom off to one corner and that is probably the cleanest area of my house because it's where I do all my work now trying to get into programming and coding uh, was really really tough for me my mind and body were geared towards athletics since I was born my dad would keep me outside for hours upon hours with uh, with baseball that's what he was trying for it nothing clicked until I handled a basketball basketball was what brought me out here to British Columbia that's what got me my scholarship that's what changed my life and it kills me to not be able to play it but after the accident I spent a lot of time indoors and I knew I needed to if not keep my body active keep my mind active and that's what made me turn mm -hmm. to computers so as I enter my bedroom and I toss my coat down onto my bed uh, I turn to my computer, the three monitor setup I have, one sort of inverted so I can see the, the coding uh, run downwards, or you know, long ways, and uh, constantly running, again, because I've been downloading some torrents, for actually not me, but for a friend, uh, wants the backlog of all Doctor Who and stuff like that too, so I was yeah. downloading them for him, as well you're as Sam, pretty, actually. You're pretty humble about your coding abilities. I think I think knowing how quickly a gift can be taken away such as losing everything that I'd put towards everything I'd put my life towards basketball was taken away from me in one night knowing how quickly that can be taken makes me very hesitant to be egotistical about it because it scares me so much the minute I say I'm good at this, or this is what I want to do, or this is who I love, or this is the life I want to lead. I'm so scared about losing that again. And tell me uh, what you do that night. You use your computer at one point. Yeah, I do. I check my computer, check the torrents. When they're done, I upload them to a thumb drive that I'm going to give to Sam because she's the one that wanted all this. I head back to the uh, kitchen and ice my leg almost immediately and I sit down and then I think while I'm in the chair but what the fuck I'm going to eat for dinner and I cook up some chicken fingers with buffalo sauce and I put them in a wrap. Listen, as a cheap student, uh, flatbread is like the most useful thing. You put anything in there. You want salad, put salad. Chicken fingers, put them in a flatbread. You want ramen in a flatbread. I mean, literally everything in a flatbread. Um, <laughs> peanut butter in a flatbread. Yeah. They're just perfect, and they're they last long. They're not like they're better than bread. I don't buy bread anymore. I just buy flatbread. I put it all in there. Tortillas is what I'm saying. This is what we call flatbread, right? Yeah. So ham, roll ups, all of them. 
cream cheese. You, can go, my friends. <laughs> you, you can go on, but you, you make one of those things. <laughs> And you're you're kind of marveling at the wonders of flatbread when you return your computer and you. They sit eat down them in space, chair. okay? The flatbreads are pro. <laughs> so you sit back down at your computer with your with your with your food, and um, what else do you do? The torrents are downloading. There's well, I want to impress Miss Carnap, so I do end up sending her that email. But I don't send her the email until I'm done my assignment. So what okay. I do is I start researching a bit of AI. It's funny because I open a tab on Roku's Basilisk, but I don't end up reading it. I just keep it and then end up closing it the other night because I completely forget. But I start diving into AI. I do a little bit of research on sort of how it was founded, who originally started it, where the concept. And then I do some sort of sci-fi reading. I have a great extensive uh, book collection that I've borrowed and kept over the years. So I end up ending the night reading a little bit of, before finishing my 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 uh, essay, I should say, reading a little bit of uh, Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov, yeah. yeah. And as you're reading Isaac, you're just kind of scrolling down on your computer, like um, you, a pop-up pops up. And it's weird because you've got ad block. Mm. Somehow I made do. it through. Okay. And I go and I just hover over the ad. Yeah. And you hover over it and then like a little shadow box drops down and says, do not close this ad. And I close it immediately. It's like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, nope. <laughs> and uh, you close it and you continue on. You continue reading a little bit. And then... Drinking Red Bull... Drinking Red Bull, it pops up again. And I right click and I go inspect element, which will sort of give me a breakdown of all of where it's, a, where it's coming from and sort of all of the details behind. Sure, yeah, do a coding check. I will. So you're like, you are a solid coder. Like you've developed a lot over the past few months, but also you did a little bit in, in high school, uh, correct? Only a tiny bit, and it was it was yeah. again. I sort of treated it like bullshit, you know. But you uh, got I got an eight. A, so you got an eight. Yeah, so you got an act to it. So right away, the code strikes you as odd. It's not showing any destination. Usually, these can be tracked back to um, like India or somewhere in the states, um, but you've never seen one that located from this area this area shouldn't doesn't exist it's just a bunch of numbers um and the ad itself actually the ad itself is is nothing it's black but the as you scroll down in the elements you do find a bit of a pattern and as you kind of code through the pattern and parse things out it says b c revival Thursday, 8 o'clock. AC Revival. And I think for a second, didn't he say it was a Revival Cinema that we're seeing Star Wars at? Uh, he said it was the Kelowna Cinema. Kelowna. So I, yeah. I Google, I open a new tab and I Google EC Revival. Kelowna, BC. BC. BC Revival. Oh, sorry, BC Revival. And I Google it, just to see if anything pops up. And nothing does. Nothing pops up for this. You see revival. It seems odd. So I click on it just to see if anything happens. Yeah, you click on it and the code kind of transforms in front of you. And it shifts. It's a strange thing. You've never seen it before, especially in a pop-up. Mm. And it says, if you wish to be enlightened, and improve your abilities for the revival. Come to Blackstone Hall Thursday at 7 p.m. What the fuck? Blackstone Hall Thursday 7. And then I go to Google again, like Google Blackstone Hall, Kelowna, BC. All right, and you do find it. And Blackstone Hall was a building that um, burnt down 
um, 15 years ago. But it's located in the northern Kelowna, um, in the, yeah, northern Kelowna district. It's still like on like a main street or whatever. Um, and it's still there as a building. It's been refurbished into a um, real estate um, office. What the hell? How the hell did this find me? And again, I sort of Google the words, you know, Blackstone Hall, Thursday 7, Revival, BC, question mark, just to see if there's anything in the news. You know, have other people been getting this? Is this something that's like a virus going around? You don't find anything. You search and you search. You spend a few hours um, just searching away and you do not find a single thing about um, BC Revival. Blackstone Hall, you do find the article where um, about it burning down um, uh, that, and how, how the owner was charged with insurance fraud. Um, you read the article about the uh, realty company taking over um, Western Realtors mm. and yeah, you that's pretty much it. That's all you can really come up with. Weird. So I jot it down onto a scrap piece of paper and I slip it in my pocket and I unplug the USB for Sam and I write the email to Miss Carnop and just say, again, apologies so much for sleeping in class today. I haven't been able to sleep very well. I know that's not your fault, but please know it's nothing to do with the content of your lecture. You're by far one of my favorite teachers and excellent at your job. And then I just sign it. Cheers, Anthony. And I attach my uh, document, which I know isn't needed. I'm going to print it up for class anyway, but she has an advance just to know that I care about this class. And I send it, and I put my computer in sleep mode. And I sort of pause before putting in sleep mode just over the exit. And I just kind of think for a moment. It seems weird. But I dismiss it from my head. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, as you're thinking you everything kind of goes quiet you're just really focusing on your brain you're kind of drifting off a little bit uh when all of a sudden the silence is shattered by your phone buzzing on your (coughs) oh jesus christ is a text or a phone call it's a text from sam corden (laughs) and it says have you got the goods (laughs) <laughs> question, mark, question mark, question mark. And I think for a second, too long probably, and I say, yeah. And after a quick moment, sweet, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, can't wait, see you soon, this weekend, question mark, question mark. Oh, and I remember and I say, hey, actually... Did you want to come Thursday? What day is it? It's Wednesday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Did you want to come to Star Wars with me and Harpool uh, Thursday night? Uh, 77 classic. No George Lucas edited bullshit. Harpool says he's bringing other friends. My date? I, I write my date question mark and then I pause before sending. And I erase it. And I send. And it says, Sam has seen your message. Mm-hmm. And then it goes, boop 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 as she's typing. Yeah. boop boop And then after, and then it stops, it goes away. And then it just says, Sam has seen your message. <laughs> and then it goes back to boop boop <laughs> and uh, then it, you, the, the response comes and it says ah, sorry man I can't I've got a uh, dinner thing with my parents I wish I could though that sounds absolutely fucking amazing have fun without me though and I say easier to have fun without you really and then I send a winky cheeky face and then I and close then, my phone yeah and it's pretty late. It's two in the morning. You have an appointment with your therapist tomorrow pretty early. <sighs> yeah. Okay. And I put my, so I put my computer into sleep mode. I toss my phone onto my charger pad and I climb into bed. 
hanging my hat on my lamp and uh, I try to fall asleep for another night. What do you see in your dreams? Do you have any nightmares tonight? Yeah, it's the same one I constantly have. Oh, it's misty. I'm in the woods. I can see as far as the trees in front of me. It's maybe five, ten feet, but they're thick and they're black trees. There's no color in anything I see. And beyond them is just this white mist. And it's thick. Thicker than anything. It's almost like a wall at first. I, I, I think I'm in a room at first. But I realize the mist is moving softly, and I can see the ground, and there's this moss, these, these large stones and this moss, and the trees. At first, I just think that blackness is the color of them, but as I, as I look at them, as I squint, I can see that the black is, it's dripping off them like, like blood, like, like ink, almost, but it's, it's thick, thicker than that and it pools at the bottom and as the pool envelops the tree the tree begins sinking and the trees all begin to sink and then soon I'm just in this mist this this thick unending mist that has no end and that's what scares me that's what terrifies me it's not it's not being lost it's I could know where I was, it's what's beyond that mist. It's what I don't see that scares me. It's like it's like being in the middle of the ocean and, and that unfathomable depth beneath you. And I know there's something in that mist, but I don't know what it is, and it terrifies me. You open your eyes, and you're at the therapist's. You can hear the clock ticking on the wall. And your therapist, Dr. Oh, what's O'Malley. his name? Yeah, Dr. O'Malley, James O'Malley, sits before you behind his desk. Um, he's twiddling a, a um, pencil in his hand. And um, he just rocks back and forth with a neutral expression on his face as he watches So, what do you? think that means I've told you that dream many times what is that Ooh. you've told me about that dream a lot Anthony um, and I'm no psychoanalyst here but um, it does strike me as odd that you'd talk about that dream so often and yet rarely ever you want to talk about the accident. Well, I don't. I mean, I don't see. They don't feel connected to me. I mean, the the dream. The dream is the thing that I can't move past. It's the thing that keeps me up. It's the thing that is. The other day, I fell asleep in class, and I remember parts of the dream. I I don't remember all of it, but I remember the mist being in it. This this unknown. This fear of. Of nothing just else. nothing. Yeah. The accident took the life. And you tell me if I'm moving too quickly. Um, but the accident took the life of your friend, Sarah. Correct? Yeah. Where do you think she is now? Well, you mean where her where's her body? I mean, she's buried at at no at Saint. I I mean her soul, Anthony. What what do you think happened after after the accident? It's a That's... hypothetical question, Anthony. Yeah, I don't but... expect you to answer it. Okay. Why? Well, I, I mean, that's such a. I don't know if I believe in a soul necessarily consciously no and perhaps unconsciously too 
But that's what I care more about, not what you consciously believe, but what you unconsciously believe. And that's the whole point of this therapy, is to find out what's lying under the surface. Maybe the things that you don't want to see, maybe the things that you don't want to think about. You've talked to me about thoughts coming up to you, hateful thoughts, and it sounds to me that you push those down. You don't let those thoughts stay in your mind. You don't explore or reflect on them. I'm wondering why that is. Well, I don't know. I guess I don't... I don't see the benefit of them right now. I... Well, not anymore, no. I, I spent a long time hating myself for what happened to Sarah um, and Cole and Emily. I spent a long time blaming myself well I mean no I, I I don't blame myself for what happened to Emily I don't I don't put that on me but I put Sarah on me and even though Sam and others might not anymore think it was my fault I think part of me still thinks it is and it was it's really tough to 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 forgive myself for that so when those feelings come up I try not to acknowledge them because I feel like I feel like it's going to be really easy for me to, to fall back down that hole again. And it took me a long fucking time to, to claw out. Mm, it did. But you did manage to. Yeah, I did. You clawed your way out. You uh, followed my suggestion to go to school for coding. Yeah. Um, I am... I'm proud of you. I think I can say that as a therapist. I'm proud of how far you've come. It's not to say that there isn't more for us to explore together, but you've come a long way in the past five months, and from what I understand, your coding has improved quite a bit as well. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, it's so off my mind. I mean, I, I love it. It's not the same thrill I got when I was playing basketball, necessarily, but yeah, mm -hmm. I... I I think a part of me likes I think a part of me likes playing up people's expectations. I mean, you, you know, you, I don't look like a typical coder. So when I'm sitting in those no. classes, they think a lot less of me and I kind of like proving them wrong. So that's mm -hmm. been a good motivator weirdly enough to sort of prove people wrong. But I don't know. Well, it sounds like you're on the right track. The only thing that I would invite you to do more is explore those feelings when they do arise. Don't let those hateful thoughts just vanish into the background, because that's where they'll stay, in the background, underneath everything, influencing your actions, whether you know it or not. If you can pay attention to them, reflect on them, then you'll know where to put them. I think that's fair. I notice I snap on people a lot, and I think that maybe is because I've been shoving a lot of those feelings down. Yeah. Well, Anthony, our hour is coming to a close. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today? <sighs> and I look down into my palm, which is, has a sweaty piece of crumpled paper with Blackstone Hill, Thursday 7, written at it, which, for some weird reason in my mind, before I entered the office, I pulled out of my pocket to talk about, and rather than reference it directly, I sort of look back up at James, my therapist, I say, yeah, I don't know, I got, I got a weird invite to something, I don't know Did anything you? about it. What? Tell me about it. Well, I don't know anything about it, really. It, kind of, it sort of came out of the blue, and uh, normally I would just dismiss it, but I don't know. Something something about it seems interesting. It, it intrigued, intrigued me quite a bit. I don't know. Do you think I'm... Should I... I don't know what I'm asking. But should I sort of lean into maybe this impulsive feeling about trying something new and spontaneous, or should I play safe for a while more? Do you think I'm ready to put myself in a position of 
of of of being a bit more vulnerable again. I, I don't know. Hmm. And he looks at the note and he kind of flips it over, looking at at the information. It says, "This is all the information you have." Y- yeah. Oh, I didn't give him the piece of paper. I was just holding. Oh, it. I thought he did. Oh. No, no, it's just in my hand. Like, and rather than say the details on, it, I'm just like sort of asking him generally about like whether or not I should take. Be I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, he says, "Well, like I say, you have come very far in your journey, and getting out there might just be the next step in your recovery." I mean, before the accident, you were uh, going to parties and getting drunk around strangers, which takes a lot of trust and vulnerability, which... And a lot of stupidity. Well, I wouldn't judge you so harshly. I was the same way. (laughs) But uh, if this is something that feels right to you, and maybe pushes your comfort zone a little bit more, then I don't see the harm in it. Thank you. I, uh, I may do that then. We'll see. He stands up and he holds a hand out and says, I'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you next week. And I leave and I go speak to the receptionist and give her my information or whatever the heck she needs at the end. And I head for the door and grab my jacket. So you head back out, and uh, you've got pretty much the rest of the day. Let's run through that day really quickly. Uh, You know, you've got work tomorrow with Ben. Um, Tomorrow being Thursday, you've got work with Ben. Yeah. Um, Just for today, how would you spend the day? Do you have any classes? Is there anything? I'd probably text Sam and see if she wanted me to drop off the USB. Uh, yep, and she replies and says, uh, yeah, that'd be great. I am out right now. I'm at uh, class or something. She says, she makes up some excuse that actually works. <laughs> and um, uh, she says, could you just leave it in the mailbox? And I kind of kick myself because I was kind of looking for an opportunity to talk to her, like to hang out a bit. So I kind of wait and I say, Actually, you know what? I'm, I, I thought I'd be around your area, but I'm not. I'll drop it off to you this weekend or something. Question mark. And, and she says, great. Sounds good. And uh, sort of a bit embarrassed that I'm being so stupid about things. I mean, Sam is, you know, like a, like a sister to me. She's cute, but I don't know. It's a weird relationship. I need to, I need to figure it out. But right now I can't deal with it, so I'm just pushing it out of my head kind of just letting things not be overthought so i do some other things i uh i keep james words in my mind and when i come back to my apartment it's about one in the afternoon i know i don't have that much until uh tonight i am supposed to stop by ben just to pick up my uh pick up his dry cleaning and drop it off and then i'm gonna be back there thursday to work but as i get to my apartment i shut the door James's words sort of ring true to me about accepting the negativity. And for a second, I, I, I think about it, and I kind of make my own mind up and say, yeah, but you know what? Also, I want to accept that positivity when it's there, and I feel good right now. So I draw back my curtains, and I clean up the pizza boxes, and I pull out the vacuum, and within the next two hours, I tidy up my apartment to the point of it being pretty presentable once again and I feel a lot better about myself and I decided to make myself an early dinner awesome and uh, you sit back and you put your feet up on the t- on um, on the little table that you've got in your apartment and you're feeling good you the apartment is clean and you've, you've taken a step in the right direction you feel and um, your phone buzzes just like does a little mm. No, different. Uh, oh. It's uh, it's Alexa. Alexa speaks up and says, Hello, Anthony. What's Alexa? Google? Yeah, basically Google, yeah. Okay. So Siri version of iPhone. Exactly, yeah. So uh, I, I kind of, I'm like, 
I ignore it at first because I don't use Alexa or Siri or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Let's put it back down. You have, you have plans entered tomorrow, Thursday, for 7 p.m. to go see Star Wars with... And Harpool. it stops and thinks for a second. Harpool. And I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, shit. Because I sync my computer with my phone, so I'm like... I just read it and I'm like, yeah. There is also a workshop happening at Blackstone Hall at the same time. Would you like me to switch your appointments? Workshop? How... Ale Alexa? Yes? How did you get the information from Blackstone Hall? Where did you find that information? Information was on your computer. Would you like me to switch the appointment? No. 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 No, I'm going to see the movie. And I put my phone back down. And I stand up and I walk to the kitchen. And I start clearing some dishes that I just had from dinner. And I'm thinking. What are you thinking about? Thinking how the hell she got my appointment. How that entered into Alexa. And what? She called it a workshop? A workshop on what? And I go to my computer and I turn it on to okay. see if there's any other pop-ups or anything. After about an hour or so, nothing pops up. Hmm. And then you continue like going about your night and doing things here and there. <coughs> and all of a sudden, you turn back to your screen and you see there is a pop-up there. And I click on it right away this time. Yeah. You click on it, and it says, BC Revival, Coding Workshop, 7 p.m. Blackstone Hall. All right, Coding Workshop. And I sit back and sort of consider it now for the first time. I don't really need a workshop, but I mean, I'm going to get better at coding. But I'm excited to see this movie. I wonder if Harpool would want to come with me. And I text him, and I just kind of say, Hey, who all is coming to the movie again? Uh, and he replies, uh, Eric, Stanley, and Janessa. Why? Okay. I might not be able to come. I might be going to this workshop instead. Workshop? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, you want to Skype? Uh, Okay. And I call him on Skype or Discord even better. I'm like, yo, join the Discord server. Go on the Discord server. <laughs> and he goes on. And, hey, buddy. Um, How's it going? You're face to face. Hey, it's good. What's what's going on? You can't come see Star Wars? I don't know. Well, first off, Sam can't come, which is not a deciding oh, factor. Fuck okay. off. Sure, it's not a deciding factor. It is not a deciding okay. factor. Come on, Listen. man. What the hell? Like, this is this is Star Hold Wars. On. I don't even know. I know, I know. Okay. For, you bought me a ticket? I bought you a ticket. All right, well, we'll decide about that after. But listen, I don't know. I'm getting these weird... Okay, so last night I was on my computer, right? I got yeah. a pop-up uh -huh. message. This random... Yeah, I know. You got ad blocker, though. I use uBlock, right? but but here's oh, the thing. Okay. It popped up. It, it sort of went under the radar, which happens sometimes. But it said... Uh, it was a local address. It's Blackstone, Blackstone Manor? Blackstone Hill? Blackstone Hill. Which I looked up, and it's a place that used to be uh, downtown here, but it burned down. And now there's, like, apartment complexes in it or something. But anyway, it said Blackstone, 7 o'clock, coding workshop. You don't need no coding workshop. Well, I know, that's what I was thinking, too, but... Okay, so I ignored it. I wrote it down. I, ha I had my uh, therapist appointment today. I just... I sort of asked him what he thought about it. I don't know, he thought it was an interesting idea sort of, it's sort of vague, but anyway, I came home and I had a notification on my phone Alexa says, you have a meeting uh, tomorrow, 7 o'clock at the movies with Harpool and I'm like, what? yeah oh, okay, yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. but then she says she just, wait, she just came, like, randomly came on? yeah, yeah, I don't know, it was weird and then That's she weird. said, but it's conflicting with another thing in your calendar, the coding workshop at 7 which I didn't put in that's messed up, man. Yeah. I think... 
you're you're not shitting me on any of this. No, this no, actually no, no. happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, man, it sounds like someone's messing with you. I'd stay away from that workshop. Sounds like someone's hacking me, right? Yeah, this is totally hacking. Like, okay, well, that's what that I thought. But here's my thinking: if someone's hacking me specifically, so they know I'm into coding, and they're specifically targeting me to get to come to this workshop, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It seems fucked up. You're right. I don't know, you know man. what? It's sketchy. Not to mention, after all the shit that happened last year, this could be someone trying to, you know, fuck with me. After the shit that happened last year? What do you mean? After the accident. Yeah, oh, okay. After Sarah. Like, there were a lot of people that forgave me, but there were people that didn't. You know, like, man, what if this like, is some yeah. psycho... Like, what if this is some psychopath who wants to kill me and he's just using something that he knows about me to try to get me alone? It could be, man. Maybe you should go to the cops. Like, this is... No, this no, is no, fucking no, weird. no. Why not? No. Why not? It could be exactly what you're talking about, in which case the cops should know about it. No, 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 no. I don't think it's a cop-worthy thing. I'm just I'm just trying to think this through. If I went, would you come with me? Uh, and you see him kind of, like, turn and look longingly at, like, a Yoda mug. I know you mug. want to see Star Wars... You wouldn't, I wouldn't, you wouldn't, I'm just saying, what time does the movie start? Seven. All right, yeah. Um, man, okay, there will be other showings of Star Wars. No, 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 look, 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 look. No, it's fine. you know no, what? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I will don't want to have to you. actually do that. I will come with you and, ah, oh, man, what if it is, though, some crazy person? I don't know if I want to subject myself. No, you know what, whatever, it's probably not. It's probably, like... You know what? Listen. You know what? I have heard of these things before. In the states, there are these like elite, like secret coding groups. Like, oh, um, like Illuminati type shit. Um, who are the guys that like hacked, like the government and stuff like that, and leaked all of those like Edward Snowden stuff? Oh, anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah, maybe it's like a group like Anonymous. Which, in which case, I wouldn't mind being associated with them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Look. Fine. Yeah. No, 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 hold on, hold, hold. Here, Here's what I'll do. Okay, let me... Sam said she can't come to the movie because she said she has her parents' dinner or something like that. I didn't ask what time it was at. I didn't really push it. Maybe I'll see if she can come, and then if she can't, maybe I'll... That's not to say you're a backup, but that's to say you have plans and I don't want to ruin it for you. Well, I appreciate that, because I really want to see Star Wars. But I also I don't do. want you to be disemboweled by crazy people. All right, I'm not going to get disemboweled. Look, let me ask Sam, and if I can, I'll text you, okay? Thank okay, you. Okay, dude. All right. Uh, and I might change my mind anyway. I might come to the movie anyway. Let's, let's, let's just... This is freaking me out. I just wanted to t share with somebody. I mean, the, the, the worst case scenario is I get kidnapped tomorrow, and no one ever knew about this, so at least you know. Don't die. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I know about it. Writing it down. All right. right now. All right, I'll talk to you later. And I hang up the call on him. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> And I text Sam and I say, hey, what time is dinner with your parents at? Uh, she says, like, 6 to 7-ish. I might be able to get off at around 7.30. And I debate for a second. Part of me says to fuck this whole thing. Part of me says if I'm going to go, I'd rather have both of them. At the very least, I don't want to inconvenience Harpool. So I text her back. Can I ask you a favor? Uh, what is it? I said, can I call? Um, yeah, okay. There was something I've been wanting to talk to you about too, so this will be good. And I'm like, oh, shh. So I plug in my headphones. And I, uh, I give her a call. And it rings a couple times. And then she picks up. And you can hear she's kind of panting. Hey. Hey, how's hey. it going? You okay? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just walking home. Oh, man, it's been a long day. Yeah. What's up? What do you want to talk to me about? Well, first and foremost, the favor is not uh, 
if I can call you, just to clarify that. I meant I have a favor. Can I call to ask you the favor? Uh, yeah, that's what I figured. What okay, is- good. Uh, nothing. Uh, okay, it's a weird... It's a weird uh, Long story short, it doesn't really matter. I know you have dinner with your parents tomorrow. Uh, you said, but it might end around seven seven thirty. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to this weird thing that I will tell you about. But I, I would like company. This is not the movie. I, I don't think I'm going to go to the movie. Um, how do I explain this? I, I have an invite to like a coding workshop. Okay. But I'm. But to be honest, I'm sort of nervous about what it might be because I'm I'm just sort of nervous about it. I was wondering if you if you'd want to hang out and come with me, just sort of as backup, I guess. You're worried about what the nerds will think of you. I don't know. I know it's I know it's a funny way to put it, but I'll tell you, they don't think you're a nerd, but I know the truth. Yeah. You're a huge nerd. Yeah, okay. No, listen, Sam, I just, I need, I would ask Harpool to come, but he's already seen the movie, and I feel bad to ask him not to come to the movie to come with me, and I know you're seeing your parents, but you said you're going to be out of there by seven anyway, so, like, could you maybe go a little earlier and leave a little earlier, and I can come pick you up at, at like, quarter to seven, and then you could come with me, and I can drop you right back off. I mean, it's not going to be, honestly, I just need some, I would ask Cole, but I haven't talked to him in, like, three months, and... Um, I'm not really close to him anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And her tone changes, and she's a lot more serious now. And after a sigh, she says, Okay. Yeah, I've been wanting to see you anyways. Uh, I, I feel like I haven't really been able to wait. My God, it's been such a crazy fucking week. But yeah, okay. Um, I'll talk to my parents. I should be able to get out a little early. They probably won't be happy. But whatever, like this is important and they understand that I need to have friends and have a life too. So yeah, Thank you. okay. So what, 645 tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I'll pick you up around the corner so they don't have to see my face. Okay. Because I don't drive. I'm just going to call it Uber if that's okay. Well, I can drive. Uh, I can take my dad's car be faster yeah uh, you know what let's just uber my treat honestly okay all right sounds good and what we'll did you want to talk to me about you said you had something you had to talk to me about oh yeah um yeah something weird happened the other day i was uh, i was talking to somebody about the accident they said something to me that was like i don't know kind of messed with me but um i don't know what we can talk about it we can talk about it tomorrow when i see you okay Okay. Uh, okay. Everything, everything's all right, though. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. I'm just kind of trying to grapple with, with it. Whatever. Um, tomorrow, six forty-five. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Talk then. Have Bye-bye. a good night. Cheers. And I hang up, and I kind of feel bad immediately after, and I'm like, fuck. Taking her away from her family. No, more so the fact that she's worried about the, something about the accident. The accident I, I try to put so far behind me, especially when it comes to Sam, for mm. obvious reasons. And uh, It was Sam's sister that you were trying to pick up who was in the car accident. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you were, she wouldn't have been there if you weren't trying to pick her up. I remember it so clearly. We... We were at the party, Cole had been drinking, his girlfriend Emily was in the front seat of the pickup, they asked me if I wanted to come, I knew he was drunk, but I kind of thought I trusted him, I got in, and then Sarah, Sarah Corden, Sam's older sister, my age, maybe by two years, she begged to come in, I knew she had a crush on me too, which is why this whole Sam thing is so fucked up, she came up to me, and she just had this so innocent... And I should have said no. I should have said, no, this isn't for you. But uh, honestly, I kind of thought, here's a girl that likes me. I'm not crazy about her, but maybe I'll get lucky. And of course, she was the only one to die. 
Anyway. And you kind of come back to, and it's dark out, you're lying in your bed, and um, it's pretty late, and actually, Sam being out, it crosses your mind, Sam being out at like 11.30 at night kind of is a little worrisome, but um, she sounded fine, and uh, as, you, as this train of thought wraps up, you start feeling a little tired. Yeah. And I turn off my light, and I climb into bed feeling really shitty especially when it comes to Sam because she looks so much like Sarah and uh yeah I curl up in a bed and I turn off the light and I try to sleep do you, do you sleep soundly or do you have a dream or nightmare tonight nope I have the same nightmare but the mist in the woods and the black inky black trees dripping and this time I can hear the sounds of the accident in the woods. And you also hear the sound of a low rumble. Or maybe it's a growl. And we're going to end there for the mid-game. I was like, end there? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. It's time to stop the action, the drama. Yes, stop the and action. Not the action. And jump over to the uh, Discord channel for the mid-game post. Whoosh. What up? What up? Discord. I haven't even opened disc Discord since my computer crashed. Uh, mid-game post. Let's do a new new window, and let's see who's going to answer the question for the mid-game post. Uh, how's everybody doing? I hope everyone's having fun, enjoying this little dramedy. I am very much. Great job so yeah. far, Justin. You too, you too. It's unfolding nicely. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very much feeling this sort of story where it's just sort of like a character driven. And I'm intrigued. I love, I love playing games as a PC uh, yeah. like this. Because I just, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm so yeah. used to playing the GM where I'm like, okay, now where I know what's going to happen. Mysteries? Yeah. yeah, it's really nice to get to just play a character and play his story and play his background and interactions and then just enjoy what happens because it's it's very nice. I really enjoy it. So thank you for doing this for me. For us. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys are enjoying so far. Um, so mid-game post, what should we ask? A lot of good mid -game character pose. names. No, you know what? Let's not do character names. Let's do um, let's do the city. We'll keep it pretty easy. Sure. Where yeah. is this story taking place? Perfect. Where is this story taking place? It's posted in the mid game post. If you want to answer that, just go down to uh, mid game post in the stream section, just below Basilis Discord chat area, and answer the question. I think we're looking uh, for not the province, but the, oh, Carly got it. Carly got it. She's the first. You give it to the first. She, uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Well, I think we'll. I think we should still roll. Yeah, we'll roll. roll. And now roll everybody's and just roll. gonna <laughs> say. Well, Galen's in Vancouver, <laughs> so no, it's true. Not. <laughs> that's what. That's what Harlan thought. I did say Vancouver, but I was wrong. Yeah, Kelowna actually is a like. It's a pretty big town for um, movies a lot of movies are filmed in Kelowna and um, people come through there Kelowna Kelowna, Kelowna. what makes you big dun, dun, dun. what's that I line? love you love you just the same Caldonia 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 what makes your big head so hard big what makes so your big head so hard that I can't be it Caledonia, or so hot? What makes your big? I think what it's hard. What makes your big? Caledonia, Caledonia. Who is Cal who's it by? Um, <coughs> BB King. Like, what make? King? Don't take your big head so hard. Don't take your big head so hard. Don't I still don't get it. Don't take your big head so hard. I don't get oh, it. I love you. I love you. I love you. Just it's a good song. What? Don't take your big head so hard. Am I just an idiot? What does it make sense about that? Don't take your big head so hard. Oh, okay. I guess it's like, oh, I have a big head. Listen, don't take your big head so hard. Like it's. <laughs> this is just a thing. It's cute. Don't take it so. Don't take it hard, honey. It's, <laughs> it's just a big head. 
Lots of people have them. Don't take it so hard. All right, well, only one answer so far, and it's Carly. So Carly's going to get the gold. <laughs> Carly for gold. Carly for gold. And Sick-tastic. Let's just do a really short mid-game. Let's go right back to it. Sounds great. Yeah. I'm just going to write down... Carly. You write down what you need to, because I'm enjoying this game. I, I, I'm i intrigued by what's going to happen. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm it's it's still kind of unfolding but uh oh it's I'm unfolding happy. well. Yeah, good. I feel like Great, it's let's get back into natural. it. Perfect. Let's get back into the game without further ado. Um let me just find the sound effect. There we go. Basilisk. Kitch. Kitch. Get over here. You hear the sound of your boss, Ben Edwards, uh, mm. call to you from the trailer that he's got on his big um, property. And his property has become mostly a junkyard. Um, he's always loved cars, and um, he kind of collects them, but he doesn't do it in a very pleasing way. So he sells a lot of his parts to um, people who come and buy them off of him. And I lean up from moving an engine block onto some cement cues. <sighs> and my hands are sort of covered in grease and I have some on my head from where I wipe the sweat from my brow. <sighs> and I turn to him and I say, What? What? I need you to fetch me a radiator. This fine man here needs a radiator for his car. Hey, hey, go to that Nissan Altima, that two, 2007 Nissan Altima in the corner of the lot, and uh, grab that for me. It's, it's Nissan, right? Yeah, yeah. All and right. I'm mumbling to the, and I start the working my way through sort of the the cars and the junk, and, and the cars at the back of the lot are sort of stacked three high, so they, in certain angles, block out the sun when it's sort of late in the day or early in the morning as it is now. And... Uh, and as I'm moving through them, it sort of casts shadows and sort of, I think as a kid, I would love to play in a place like this to be able to hide from my parents, hide underneath the cars. There's just so many angles in which to get lost in. Mm. And to an extent, it's sort of fun and and, uh, and a bit creative to pretend that I'm somewhere else. And uh, as I kne kneel over, the uh, Nissan Altima and open the hood and, and take out the piece that I need. I, I think back to the first time I moved through this junkyard and how I met Ben Edwards and how meeting him was sort of not meant not meant to happen. He hired me after sort of a a, a run in between my apartment complex and the school that I now go to. Uh, like I mentioned, it's easy to cut through his lot, and so many kids do it. And when I was back playing basketball, uh, the other school is sort of kitty corner to the one I'm at right now, so it's equally useful to cut through, and, and a, lot, like, a lot of kids did, including myself. There were a few times Ben even would yell at me, probably, without knowing it, but we always called him sort of the old asshole that owned the junkyard, never really giving him the time of day. It wasn't until I broke my leg five, six months in a wheelchair, and then eventually on crutches. Uh, it was winter, and I was trying to move through the junkyard as well to drop off my last assignment at school. I made it about halfway through, and I got tangled up in the barbed wire, and I got frustrated, and I was tired and cranky, and I had lost so many friends by that point. I just remember bending over in the snow trying to pull up my crutch, and I was grabbing the barbed wire with my bare hands, and I was cutting them up and bleeding on the barbed wire, and tears were in my eyes when he came out and caught me and at first I think he was ready to yell yell at me until he saw me and he saw my face and he saw the tears down my cheeks and he, he brought me inside and uh, made me a cup of coffee and we started talking and we became close after that and then he hired me not too long ago to start working here and helping him out he's too old to run the books and to lift the stuff and to f fetch radiators <sighs> from Ultima's and as I pull it out I sort of toss it and I head back towards he was towards where he was and as I approach what how big is a radiator I have no idea what's a radiator is <laughs> like this big isn't it uh, the radiator is like a like a big like I think 
Let's find out. This is car learning. Yeah, they're pretty big. Okay, so oh, let's right. say it wasn't the radiator. It was the oh, wait, headlight. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, it's the engine cooling, like, grill. Like, yeah, that's... that's do thought. you need that? Is that what you actually uh, meant? No, why don't we say alternator? We'll say it was okay, an alternator. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So, see, I know him well enough that when he says radiator, he means alternator. There you go. <laughs> Sick. That's so there's my save. So I'm like, <laughs> old man thinks he needs a radiator, but I know he needs an alternator. And then I'll, I'll I walk back as he grumbles that I got the wrong piece. But I say this is what you actually meant, and I hand it to him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, here it is. Now it'll be forty, like we agreed on. And uh, the man behind the counter, um, Indian man, <coughs> knocks and reaches into his his back pocket, pulls out a wallet, says, uh, "Oh, there you go." Um, Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, you have yourself a fantastic day, Mr. Harrington. We'll see you again. And uh, the man turns around with his new alternator and uh, walks away. I say, hey, oh, sorry, Harrington. Uh, that's right. Is your yeah. son Harpool? Yes, he is, my son. Um, I say, and I kind of excuse myself around the, the corner, I say, you know, I, I, I haven't had the pleasure to meet you yet, I guess, but I'm, I'm a... I'm a friend of your son's. We go to the same school. We go to the Polytechnic around the corner. Uh, my name is uh, Anthony, oh. and I reach out oh, and I shake his hand. Very nice to meet you, uh, Anthony. Yeah. Nice to meet hey, you too. Sorry. Wh and what was your first name? Oh, that's a good question. Let me find it here. <laughs> uh, my first name is Don. Hassan. Donnie. My Donnie? my friends call me Donnie. <laughs> okay. I say. Uh, Don Harrington. <laughs> so that's, I say, uh, it's nice to it meet you. It isn't my real name, but you would not be able to pronounce it if I did. No, it, I completely, I, I understand. I just, sorry, I, I heard the last name and I, I figured I'd say hi. Um, I, I know your son well. I'm planning on seeing him tonight, actually. Oh, oh, yes. I, you are going to this, the, the War of Stars? The star <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> is that racist? I don't know. I don't, the War of Stars? No, no, it's not. It's it's basically this man does not know fair, much fair. about what his son um, is. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on... Uh, yeah, I think I might see one of the Star Wars. Go see a Star War. Um, go see a Star Wars. Go see a Star Wars. War. <laughs> That's Arrested I'm just kidding. I, I know it is Star Wars. I, no, I was no, no, the no. one who introduced my son to it. Very nice. I just wanted to introduce... I just... I figured I, I might as well take a chance and, and say... Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm surprised that he hasn't had you over to the house yet for a meal. Um, yeah, well, you know, we're, we're school chums right now uh, and sort of branching off into after hours hanging out. So, But I'm sure sh I'll, I'll be over at your place soon. I will see you then. Take I'll care, uh, Anthony. It's nice to meet you, Don. And I turn and, back uh, to Ben. He turns around and goes back. Yeah, and I turn back to Ben. And I say, "That's uh, one of my friend's dads, apparently." Yeah. Well, you see that? And he points up to a clock. Yeah. That there's a clock. So you're still on it. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> you pour ben. me a coffee. Yeah, I'll pour you a goddamn coffee. And I sort of walk Dang. over to the coffee and I pour him some. As I bring it back, I give it to him black because I know he likes milk in it. And I say, listen, I can take a second and talk to a customer. It's literally what we do. And that's the only customer we're going to have today. So what are you talking about? I know, I know. Call me old fashioned. But if my dad ever caught me not working when I was supposed to be, oh man, that would have been hell to pay, I'll tell you. Yeah, that. and how did you feel about your dad? You've told me this many times, but just so we hear in the cheap seats, how was he? Oh, my dad. Mm -mm, he was one bad motherfucker. That's right. Shit. So, so, so your reason is that you want me to feel the same way about you that you did about your dad, or. Do you want what to learn from? To what are you trying to do here, boy? I'm trying to tell you that you know if you didn't like the way you were treated, don't treat people the same way. Look, you might be old, but I think you still got a lesson or two to learn, old man. And I go I'm and grab the milk from the fridge. I'm done learning. I'm done learning. And I grab and the milk. Uh, and I smell it. It's 
passed, but it it's you'll drink it. I know you will, and I put it down. Uh, damn right I will. He takes it. He's got a smirk on his face. He said, yeah. "Man, I don't know what you're doing in that school of yours. Those places are just money traps. They suck up your money. Don't teach you a damn thing that's practical in the real world." Well, maybe in your world, yeah, okay. I mean, it doesn't. But you know, the world's changing, man. Like, you don't need a computer here. And I point to stacks of papers which have, like, all this, yeah, you know, yeah. handwritten receipts and, like, just everything, like, all fucking yeah. disorganized. But, you know, the world's changing. By by the time my kids come along, you know, they're, they're going to be dealing completely with computers. I mean, none of this physical stuff's going to be left. And, I mean, there's no sense in teaching outdated stuff in school. I mean, they don't even teach Roman numerals anymore. They used to be teaching C++ and all that kind of shit in school. Mm-mm. Those computers. Well, that telephone you got in your pocket? Well, it's more than just a telephone. It's a telephone, camera, map, ah, it's all these things. You spend, well, you don't personally, which is why I like you. But I see the kids when I go out to shopping, I see all the kids on their phones and the fangled gadgets and Game Boys. They spend all their time out of it. Game you know, Boys. Ben, listen. What? You know what you sound like? Every other old person ever. You don't like it. You're scared of it. But look. And I pull up my phone and I walk over to him and say, look, for just two seconds, okay? And I pull out the piano app on my phone. And I just start playing on it. And I say, I have a piano in my pocket that I'm allowed to now make a little bit of music as I'm going. And then I switch to the camera and I make it front facing and I show him his own face. And I say, look, see that ugly old man? That's you. And I take a picture of him as I'm doing it. He shakes his head and he says, what I'm saying is that you young folks spend so much time on them, you start to rely on these things. They show you where to go, they show you who to talk to and what things to look at, sucking the soul out of people. People don't talk the way they used to. People don't interact. That yeah, guy, well, he's one of my best customers. He comes in, he doesn't just come for the parts, he comes for the conversation. I know that much. He doesn't listen, want to just order his parts online, but he could. It's, it's, that's not true. The, you, 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 you're saying a, an old rhetoric that people have said since the dawn of times. When the newspaper came out, they said, oh, people don't talk anymore, they just read the paper. God, when books were first published, they said, oh, what happened to telling stories around the fire? Now, you know, it's, it's just, it's the next thing. It's just, it's just because it's, it's, it's in your hand and it's small and because you don't understand it, you fear it and you think it's going to change what you, what you love about your life. But, Ben... Uh, case in point, I'm 20. I do coding in school, but you don't see me pulling my phone every second of the day. We have more face-to-face -face conversations than any of your customers. Mm. It don't rule it out just because of something you don't understand. It's not that bad. And besides, you, I think, would get a big kick out of it. I mean, these global communities are becoming closer than ever. I can now talk to somebody in the UK the same way I talk to you. I can have deep, meaningful conversations with people halfway around the globe. I can go on my computer on a Wednesday night and stream for people all around the world to watch and comment and, and joke along. Yeah, you might feel like it's, it's creating more space between us, but the truth is it's bringing us closer together than ever before. You are a an optimist. I know that much. I've never been praised for that quality, I'll tell you that. Maybe well, you're right, but I don't know. It just seems like the way things are going, there's going to be a breaking point. Yeah, maybe. Something's going to happen. Anyway, and I look back up at that clock and I say, you need anything else done today? Because you seem to be chatting a lot of the day away. Yeah, yeah, you're good to go. Pass me that phone over there. 
And he points to a like old like twist turn phone. <laughs> oh, this evil contraption! This this monstrous diabolical feat of ingenuity. Are you sure you yeah, want to put your hands yeah. on it, then? Shut oh. your trap and just get me the damn phone. And I pick it up like chattering as everyone over is like, oh no, I don't know, I don't know, Ben. Oh, I wonder if there's a ghost on the other side trying to to talk you into doing something evil. I'm just trying to call my girlfriend, and maybe she's trying to get me to do evil things. And uh, so you have a girlfriend? Oh, I do not. I don't. Okay, well then you go on believing that old man Ben can't get a girlfriend. I just I said when, you know since when do you have a girlfriend? I didn't say you don't have a girlfriend. Can I listen? You got places to be. Skedaddle, get out What's of your here. name? She pretty? And I'm like backing towards the door as I grab my coat. She pretty? She single? She 85 like you? Can you guys she have sex? Single. Can you get oh, it up? Yeah, we have sex every week and yes yeah. I can. Oh, do you now? I tell you, yes I can. Now you better close that door behind you or I'm going to kick you out. Every week, eh? Every week you guys have sex, huh? Yeah. I shut the door. Hello? Yep. Fuck, and I leave. Yep. And as I'm leaving, I sort of walk again through the tall stacked cars and I look over them briefly. And I think again, you know, this is a this would be a great place to get lost in as a kid. There's so many nooks and crannies, so many places to hide. And I kind of mutter to myself and I say, someone would get lost in a place like this pretty easily. And I, and I step out through the hole in the grate near my apartment complex. And I check my watch, and uh, I look down at my phone to see if uh, Sam's texting me. Uh, yep, she has. She says, parents are cool with it. I will see you at 645 around the corner. Perfect. Great. So uh, you've got about 45 minutes to, I guess, get ready and <coughs> prep for it. What do you do? I want to I'm 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 curious and nervous about this. Did did Mrs. Carnop ever respond to my email? Um Yeah, she did. Did you mention the workshop? I didn't, or? but I'm going to call her. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how close Go I am on. with the professor, but I Anthony's never been one. I mean, part of being an athlete in high school gave him a, a real sense of, you know, Ability when it came to sort of reaching out to people, which yeah. he's used pretty well throughout his life, um, and he's going to uh, do that now. And uh, he calls his professor's line. Okay, and uh, it rings a few times, and it goes to voicemail. Okay. And Hi, you've reached the voicemail of Sophia Carnop. Please leave a message after the beep. Boop. Hi, Mrs. Carnop. It's, uh, it's just about to say Harlan. <laughs> I leave so many messages. I'm so impulsed to say my own name. Uh, hi, Mrs. Carnop, uh, Professor Carnop. It is Anthony Kitch from your coding ethics class. I'm sorry to bother you uh, on a Thursday night. I just wanted to ask you a few quick questions. I've had a very vague sort of request to visit a coding workshop in Blackstone Hill and I know you've been in this town for quite a while and you've taught coding ethics for a long time and I was just wondering if this is anything that you've heard of before maybe uh, I'm gonna be attending it tonight at 7 o'clock um, and I'm sure this is sort of a waste of your time so I apologize again but I figured it would be silly of me not to check with you first and foremost because there's just so few uh, details on this that I, 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 I'm not too sure what I'm getting myself into. Anyway, uh, please feel free to text me or call me back at, uh, and I give my number. Um, otherwise, if you think I'm being silly, you can wait till next week and we can talk about it in class. Or you can pretend I never called you and I can just be embarrassed that I left this message in the first place. Hope you have a great evening. Goodbye. And I hang up. And feeling a bit regretful that I bothered her with something so mundane, I'm kind of like, uh, it happened. And I, uh, begin walking to Sam's house because I don't want to pay for an Uber there and to this place. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I just sort of start and about halfway there my leg really starts to tense up. It does, yeah. But I, I get to head to the ravine which is nice. Perfect, yeah. 
So you start making your way into the thickening trees and down into the valley where the, the ravine is. And her house isn't too far away from the other side of the ravine. Mm. And there are a few trails that go back through here. Um, none of them are like really tendered, but uh, uh, you can walk through pretty easily. And as you get to where the stream is, you notice that the stream is covered by a mist. It's just kind of rolling around on top of the stream in the forest. It's and been pre a pretty damp day. The mist always makes me uncomfortable. Again, it was misty the night of the accident. Mist has, has become so prevalent in my nightmares as of late that I sort of get a cold sweat the minute that I feel in the woods with a mist and I sort of shake my head and I almost don't look at it and I continue and pick up my pace just a little bit. And the mist is there to your right the whole time and it kind of blocks out your peripheral vision on the right hand side, just this kind of wall of whiteness. And again, your footsteps become very crisp as you're walking through, you can hear your breathing, you can see your breath on you in the spring, the crisp spring air. And you get the odd sensation that you're being watched. The hairs stand up on the back of your neck. And all at once I get very nervous and I sort of just stop and I look into the mist for a moment. Go ahead and roll wits. I don't want to. It's scary. <laughs> My wits are so low. Seven. No, I think I need an eight, nine, or ten. No, not quite. So I just um, wait a moment, and then I continue moving at a quickened pace, almost a jog. Yep. So you continue moving, and that's when you hear it. Something else is moving on the opposite side of the stream. Uh, Sounds like heavy footfalls. Like, yeah, I just start. I run, the, I run out of the woods. I push my leg really painfully, and I begin running. All right. You run, and you sprint, and everything <sighs> is loud around you. Your footsteps are piercingly loud now, and your breathing is loud, and you can hear your heart thumping in at your chest. All of these sensations that you're creating make it so you can't hear anything else around you. Mm. You brush into branches and snap twigs, and eventually um, you get the feeling that whatever it was is chasing you, but you break through into the clearing on the other side, into the backyards of um, the new housing development that's there, and you look back over your shoulder, and there's nothing. And I wipe the sweat from my brow and uh, a bit of the water from my eyes, realizing that I was so afraid that I was crying a bit. And uh, I shake my head and I, I feel like I must have been dreaming because that's just too much like a nightmare I would have had. And I sort of just say, Anthony, it's okay. It's okay. And I head, head to uh, Sam's house. Okay, so uh, you make your way there, and the night's very calm. There's nobody really driving on these suburban streets, and uh, you make it around the corner from her house. It's kind of a, I guess it's a semi-detached house where there's another one, a complex or something. Anyways, um, you're around the corner, you shoot her a text, and um, you just get a K response. She's mad at me. Anytime anyone responds with a K, a you know they're K. mad. Two Ks is fine. KK is totally Ks, fine. Three Ks is perfect. KKK. It's K, K, opening up to a joke. It's opening but, up to uh, a, a Ku Klux Klan uh, joke. Yeah. But um, you just get one K. And it's only like you're putting your phone back in your pocket. Like it's pretty quick when you see her appear around the corner and she's looking flustered. <coughs> hey, are you okay? All right. Okay, let's just order the Uber and go. 
Yeah. Okay. And I sort of walk around the corner and I pull up my app and I start ordering it. I'm like, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. So, yeah, that thing I was talking to you about and she reluctantly turns to you. Her arms are yeah. crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she says, oh, wait. And she turns her head over her shoulder and... Um, looks towards her house and she says you know what let's wait till we're in the car I'll tell you then okay hey and, and I reach wait. out and I put a hand on her shoulder and I'm like hey it's okay like and at first she kind of flinches away but Ooh. then she okay. like she relaxes into it she does relax into it and you she lets out an exhale <sighs> thank you for coming I, I really needed to see you today uh Thank you for coming. You're doing me the favor. Like, this is something that I was really uncomfortable with doing. Ouch. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully it's nothing, and, um... Hopefully. Maybe we can hang out for a bit afterwards. I don't know, man. I was walking through the woods, too, and, uh... Something fucky happened. This... Did I ever tell you about that dream I've been having? That nightmare? Mmm... I think you mentioned it. That's the... Yeah, the one with the trees. Melting. Yeah, it's like this. It's like this. Yeah, it's like this white mist. It's like really thick, and I was just walking through the the woods, and I swear I heard. I Hold swear on. I heard some. And um, she gestures behind you, and you turn and you see a black Nissan Altima, funnily enough, oh. pulling up. <gasps> Harpool's dead. <laughs> That's what he does. Hello. <laughs> Could you imagine? Now that's racist. No, I don't know. And uh, I get into the Uber and yep. we tell and him where we're going. down next to you. And now that you're in and like once, like it's quiet until you get out of the neighborhood. And then she lets out an audible breath and then turns to you and says, sorry, what was that about your dream? No, it, do it doesn't matter. What, 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 so what's up with you? You said you want to talk about it. From oh, the fuck. Okay, so... I I don't know how you're doing, but I've been um, the accident still really bothers me. I know it's been several months. So the other day, this is what I wanted to talk to you over the phone, but I figured better in person, right? The other day, I'm speaking with Laura Grimes, who is her dad is um, Sergeant Grimes from the Kelowna Police Force, right? And I'm talking to her about the accident and she's, you know, being a good friend and consoling. And then she tells me about a conversation that her and her dad had that was supposed to be confidential, but they're like, her dad likes to drink and he's just blabbing away at the kitchen table, fucking guy. And he brings up our accident. So automatically Laura's interested. And um, he says that the lieutenant that was in charge of the report fucked up. Whoa. How? She didn't want to say it first, and that's where I was yesterday. I was trying to um, just get it out of her, talk to her, and, and see whether or not she'd tell me, because this is really important to me to find out what actually happened to Sarah. And apparently, he didn't mark it properly he didn't log it properly for whatever reason he left out a important detail what about the accident what detail i don't know it it, it was small um and i mean like anybody could have made this mistake but i don't know why the report would say differently you know how like the official story is that um you guys hit um a bear yeah. Yeah, that's what the newspapers are saying. There was no animal, there was no carcass at the crime scene, or not a crime scene, but the accident. Whatever you guys hit, either you guys didn't hit an animal at all, or it just walked up and went away. There wasn't even blood at the scene, according to Sergeant Grimes. Other than Sarah's. Yeah, that, that too. But, isn't that weird though? I mean, this is, uh, this has been bugging me for the past whole day. Like, I can't stop thinking about it. Something is off. Yeah. I don't know why that lieutenant didn't do his job 
and mark things properly, but I, I feel like that's an important it's thing. Not, like what if it wasn't a bear? What if it was a hit and run? Just, like, what if there's someone out there who's sir, responsible for Sir, can you stop the car? Her? Can you stop the car, please? And the minute and he stops I the car, know. I get out of it. And I walk to the... I walk off. I shut And she gets out, too, and she follows. She's like, what the fuck? What I can't doing? do this. I can't do this. Do you know how long I've been trying to put this shit behind me? When you said yesterday that it was about the accident, my, that my fucking... I haven't been thinking of anything else since. I can't do this, Sam. I can't do this anymore. I told you, I told you months ago that I would answer any questions you had about it because I cared about your sister and I want you to feel comfortable. But I can't keep doing this. I can't keep reliving the fucking worst night of my goddamn life every time we see each other. It kills me. It's my life, my life was destroyed because of that I everything I had planned to do for the rest of my life basketball my entire future is gone and I understand that Sarah's is too and I am sorry for that and I know Emily's is too and I'm sorry for that too but every time I, I remember that night every time I you want to talk about it it just makes it it makes it all come back to me everything I lost I'm sorry, Anthony, but this is important. There, this, okay, it might not be anything. It might be nothing. It might just be that, um, this, like, Mr. Grimes is just fucking lying, but this is important to me, and I thought that it would be important to you. The way we talked, the way we discussed it, you said that... <sighs> You would do anything to make it better. Of course I would do anything to make it better, but nothing's gonna fucking make it better. Sarah's dead. My leg will never be the way it once was. Cole is fucking Cole, and Emily, she's never gonna get her memory back. So you what, can't what are we gonna be make it better? I wanna know what happened to my fucking sister. How is that gonna make it better? You know what happened to your sister. She got in the wrong what car. What happened to Yeah. Why'd she do that? Because she's... Because she trusted me. And she shouldn't have. Listen, I trust you too. And I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't feel that you were ready to help me with this, but I feel like you are. And I, I care about you, and I think that together we'll be able to get to the bottom of this and have justice or, or just knowledge about what happened what does it matter if it was a bear or a mongoose or a fucking person he hit something it didn't change the events of the accident it it should have been labeled under foul play or the investigation shouldn't have been closed because they didn't have Do you think it was a reason. malicious bear that ran out and sacrificed itself so that Look, it doesn't matter. Fine. I know it's... Fine, Sam. Fine. But listen. If you know everything there is to know about whatever creature we hit that night, is this done? I, is this going to be something... I can't move past this so long as we're still dredging it up. You get that, right? I know. I know. I feel like... I can't move past it unless I do, unless we do figure this out. Okay. Maybe, maybe you're right. I mean, I haven't stopped having these nightmares. Maybe there's something that still needs to be resolved. And at the very least, I owe you because you're coming with me tonight. Which yeah, where the I hell guess are we we're walking anyway? the rest of the way. Yeah, I'll tell you on the way. We're going to probably there maybe a little bit late anyway let's go and I start walking the direction because the Uber is taken off so you walk through the rain towards northern Kelowna it's not too far it's about a 15 20 minute walk and eventually you get there an old quaint looking street um, where the buildings are kind of old-fashioned like um, you know just um, one horse town sort of strip where like 
knitting shops have kind of moved in and stuff. Mm. And um, you move up to the address where um, uh, Western Realty uh, is located. And you see a very modern looking building with a beautiful, like well tendered lawn. The lawn has actually just been re soldered um, in the spring and uh, everything looks very fresh. The lights are off. So. And so I've told her the whole thing by, by this okay. point. Yeah. And the so, rain yeah. seems to be letting up a bit. Okay. Um, do we just knock? I don't know, man. And I walk up and I sort of look around. And yeah, I end up knocking. And it's just a glass like window. The whole front of the building is glass and you can see into a reception area. And there's a light leading into um, some back rooms. Hmm. How can we get inside? Um, I may know, well, I know a little bit about lock picking, but... You're going to lock pick it, Sam? I don't, I don't think I can. I've it's a really fucking invitation. In there's, they, they asked me to come here. I mean, there's no way. Speaking of, I mean, if this is some shit, if oh, this look. is somebody trying to get even for the accident, what, what's our game plan here? Is your phone, are you fully charged and shit? 100%, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and Sam points, she says, keypad. And she points to like a little black box that oh. is covered up. And um, it can be flipped up to reveal. And I flip it up and take a look. Huh. Well, I don't think they would have given me any sort of code I needed. They said it was... Blackwood, and I look at the note I wrote down, and it was Blackstone Hall, 7 o'clock, coding workshop. Yeah. And that was it, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Try 1111. <laughs> I'm not going to try 1111. It could lock us out. Oh, yeah. Um, could you hack it? No, we can't hack a keypad like this. Oh. Might just look like some of the numbers are worn off, though. And I take my phone in my pocket and I turn on the flashlight. Are any of the numbers sort of a bit more uh, run out than the others? Yep. So, the numbers that are worn out... One second. It's a four-digit one, right? Yeah, uh, yes. So it's four digits. You assume there's like four little... Um, digit windows and the ones that are worn out are the two mm -hmm. and the nine mm -hmm. and the four mm -hmm. and the two two nine four are the ones that are done. Okay. And I pull out my phone and I say, okay, give me a second here. And I start looking through my phone. What are you looking for? I'm just trying to run a few options. Here's my thinking. If these numbers are run together, they might be trying to spell a word. Are there letters underneath each of these? No. Oh, okay, so it's on just your, on your phone there are letters though. Yeah. Then maybe not. So two nine four two. Mm -hmm. Four letter words based on those numbers would be Aki, Bach, Biga, Kagi, KG, Chai, Gabby, Hazy, Wa Hazy, Hazy. And I kind of think about it for a second with the mist and all that kind of stuff. And I get a bit nervous. I can't imagine it would be this, but just in case. So I try hazy, which would be 4299. Okay. And it blinks red. Hmm. And then goes back to the default screen. 
What do you think, kid? Four, nine, two. What combination of those would make sense to you? Um, I feel like, and she's standing there looking at it um, with her arms crossed. I feel like you might be onto something with the words or the letters. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, I guess I could do more. Abba, achy, away, baby, baba, ba, kaka. Claw. And she's kind of looking over your shoulder at your phone. What about BC? Yeah, BC I could do, but that's only two numbers. That'd be 22. Yeah. Um, What's the code okay. for Kelowa? Kelowna? Kelowna, sorry. That'd be 5, 5, e, 3, 5, Six, like all of not <laughs> the letters. Yeah, six, what was the first thing? It said BC two. remember? BC that... revival or... is what you did you tell her? Oh that's right. Yeah, I told her all that. Yeah, BC yeah. revival. Yeah. So but what the hell would that be in forty nine? I have no clue. Maybe it's no. just the two numbers. You think it's just twenty two? I try that, twenty two. And it goes to the hmm. and goes back to default. BC. BC 49, maybe? BC 94? Oh, worth a shot. I try both of those. And funnily enough, BC 94 works. Oh. 94. I wonder if it's the year or something. Maybe, yeah. When when did the place burn down? Oh, that's right. It was 1994. Okay. Well then, we're in. Should we... Uh... Okay. Hold on, do doesn't it. that sit off with you? That we got this fucking code open because of BC in the year 94? I mean, it's it's a code. Um, do you think it's for the real estate, or do you think it's for the coders downstairs? I don't know, man. Something about all of this feels so off, but... I mean, we're this far now. You said your phone is working. I told a few people where we are, so... Let me just text Harpool. And I text him, and I'm just like... At the place now with Sam, code on the door was BC94, a.k.a. 2294... If you don't hear back from me in an hour, send everyone. Exclamation place, exclamation point. Smiley face. And then I send a gif of Gary Oldman from Lee on the Professional going, Everyone! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he sends back a LOL, Roger that, going into movie now. Yeah, and I say, uh, may the force be with you. Yeah, and he sends back a gif of Darth Vader dancing <laughs> and uh, so I enter with Sam perfect so you walk in and the door closes behind you and immediately the sound of the drizzle and the rain from outside is cut off as this room is surprisingly even though it's made of glass very very quiet and so quiet that you think that you can hear some mumbling do you hear that? Yeah. I'm gonna roll a listen. Four. Four, okay. And um, she'll roll as well, so why not? Otherwise you gotta go room to room. Uh oh. Do, 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 do. Semicolon has joined. Semicolon, okay, so she got one eight. Nice. So I, I think it's coming from down here. And she starts walking with her head cocked down the hallway. And as I'm like looking at the things on the walls, I kind of see her. I'm like, hey, 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 don't go too far ahead. Okay, well, then and I walk up behind her. Yeah. And I'm looking around at this building as we're going through it. Is there anything on the walls, calendars, posters? Like, yeah. what's. Yeah, there's like awards. Um, you see a. Uh, on the, the front desk, 
there is a um, name little card or whatever that's pointing yeah. towards a couple chairs and then there's a computer and stuff max steiner is on the card and uh, you see a bunch of like pictures and plaques on the back of like a um a, like a, a white guy in a suit shaking hands with people smiling and cutting ribbons in front of very new looking houses and um like awards and stuff and as i'm as i'm approaching i pull up my phone and i google max steiner Max Steiner, realty, realty mogul, um, sells, um, achieves, you know, realty uh, Canada award for excellence, and different headlines about Max Steiner's done it again. Another suburb put up thanks to him. Hmm. Okay, I close my phone. He's got like a website and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and then I close my phone and I follow uh, closely to Sam. So you walk, you walk past like a little boardroom or a little meeting room, and a little bathroom and kitchen, and you make it to the back, and there is a door. And I look to Sam, and I kind of shrug, and I open the door. So you open it, and it leads into a completely white room you can just make out with the light of um, what's outside and spilling into the hallway and then in but it's pretty dark now and in this room is nothing but what looks to be an old fashioned hatch leading down obviously (sighs) I turn to Sam and I'm like this has just gone from weird to fucking creepy yeah I don't know how I feel about this and I look back towards the door to the exit, aka the front. And I look back towards the hatch. Why are we even doing this? Because a weirdly mysterious message came to me. But look, you're with me. Yeah. Harpool knows we're here. Yeah. Fuck, even Mrs. Uh, Carnop knows I'm here. I can call my parents just in case. Yeah. Maybe or the cops. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just hang back for a minute, and I'll take a peek. Okay. They don't know you're coming. If it all seems clear, I'll give you the a OK. You want me to just hang out up here? Just for f- like a few minutes. If I say Gary Oldman, everything is good. If I say, I don't know. What's a what's a good word to say if everything goes shit? Christian Bale. Okay. If I say Christian Bale, call the cops. If I say Gary Oldman, come on down. Okay. How long should I wait? About six Michael Keatons. And I start heading towards six the Michael hatch. Keaton. She <laughs> chuckles to herself. We gotta think of a better system. <laughs> And I go to the hatch, and I uh, look down. Is it, like, just a covered hatch, or...? Yeah, it's a covered hatch. It's, like, wood boards. Uh, it looks like it's been, like, revamped and, like, sanded and varnished again to look old-fashioned. But, yeah. And I run my hands along it, and it's just so bizarre. And I look up to her, and I look back down a bit, and I open she the shrugs. hatch. Okay. You open it, and it opens relatively smoothly but it does creak a little bit as you do open and you look down at a thin wooden uh stair uh, well ladder more like leading into a really dark looking soot covered basement i don't know kid and i pick up my flashlight and i shine it down the hall yeah, and uh, as you pick up your flashlight and you go to, to shine it down, um, Jesus Christ. you you do see that there is a little bit of light coming from there. Just very, very faint, but it looks like blue light is flickering off of the walls. What do you see? Blue light flickering off the walls? Okay. And I sit back for a moment, again, sort of catering to my hurt leg and I think I'm like 
What do I have to lose? All right. I'll let you know. And I start climbing down the ladder. Okay. So you climb down, and the ladder kind of sways a little bit to the side. And you turn back around, and you're looking down at this almost kind of like your university, just that sort of style, like very old fashioned, um, low ceilings, you have to duck a little bit, but the walls are black and dark. Well, yeah. And down the hall, you can see the, it bends slightly, but you can see it more now, the unmistakable flicker of computer light. And I feel a bit more comfortable. And uh, I start... Was my background always that dark? No, it just went dark. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. The lights must have died. Wow. Both of them? I guess makes me uncomfortable I climb down the ladder and yeah. uh, you're staring down this hallway staring down the Fast. hallway some blue light I got really distracted sorry um <laughs> it came me out. and I head towards the computer you said there's a computer down there the computer light there's computer light yeah so you so make your way yeah. down the hallway and now being closer you can definitely see that these walls have seen fire um, probably haven't been finished at all since or redone at all since um, the fire and you get close to the bend and you stop and like peer around yeah kind of I in. do I'm going to take a like a I'm going to go up and touch the wall is there like soot that comes off on my hands yes Jesus Christ. And I look towards the blue light again, and I continue walking towards it. And you round the corner, and then you can see it. You kind of have, you're gonna have to squint a little bit. There's about 10 computer screens. 10? And 10 computer screens all sit set in a circle in this round room that has a door on the opposite end. And the chair, there's one computer that faces directly towards you, and there's a chair that sits there, and every other chair is filled with people in black hoodies, their hoods are up, and they all simultaneously look towards you. Um and I look towards them back and I say, uh, hi. And a man at the back stands and he says, Anthony, Kitch? Yeah, and who might you be? My name is X, welcome to the BC Revival, come. Take a seat. And I sort of nervously look around. And I kind of say, all right, hold on. Before all of that, you guys contacted me. You hacked me? That is correct. Why? Why me? To see if you would pass the test. So this is a test? It was you've already passed you were able to break our encryption you found the message and now you're here okay so what is this the BC revival was created to bring him back back to our world you see God is dead and we aim to 
change that. He will rise from the ashes, and the others around him repeat, he will rise from the ashes, and he will guide us once more, and he will guide us once more. And I'm just like looking around. Listen, I, I think maybe we got off on the wrong foot here. I thought this was like a coding workshop. I don't think this is exactly what I'm looking for. And I start backing away. And you back away and you're stopped. Someone has stepped up behind you. Okay. And I turn around. He's big. He's wearing a black hoodie as well. And he, he looks, he's just massive. He pretty much blocks the entire hallway. You're actually surprised he was able to sneak up on you and you're also wondering how he would manage to get behind you. Yeah, I'm gonna say, listen guys, I appreciate all this. Uh, I'm no Christian Bale. <laughs> I say it very loudly. <laughs> I am no Christian Bale of toughness. I just want to leave, and I think everything's going to be okay if you let me leave. It's too late for that. Either All right, you know what? You, you're freaking me the fuck out now. Nothing is too late for anything. I don't want to be here, okay? Now that you know about this, how is it that we're supposed to let you go? Well, I don't even know what this is. You've, you haven't... You showed me your a room in the basement. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't give a fuck what you guys have to do. Put a padlock on the door. That's all. <sighs> Anthony. I'm disappointed that this is how it's gotta be. Well. Go ahead. Yeah? Yeah. You can leave. And I start leaving. But just know that this isn't the end. And I stop. What is that supposed to mean? Now that you know about us, you're gonna wonder about us. And if you don't wonder about us, then you're going to run into problems. That's just how it is now. I turn back towards him. What is it that you want with me? You want me to, what, code for you to bring about, what, him back? What, 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 none of this makes any sense to me. Put it in layman's terms. <sighs> layman's terms? God is dead, and we want to bring him back into artificial intelligence. It won't be artificial when we do bring him back, but we're working on it. And he is going to save the world. That's our goal here. The BC Revival wants nothing but to bring God back. And what's in it for me? Help. Are you going to pay me or what? I mean... <laughs> well... You could go to heaven. Or, when we succeed in our mission, then you will go to hell. If you do not help us. This is your choice. I don't know, man. I'm not sure how creating an artificial intelligence for a, for a god is very likely. And I'm not sure why you think you need me. And someone beside him um, speaks up and says, I told you he wouldn't get it. And the man like shushes him and says, okay, well, you don't believe me. That's fine. We can act out his will in other ways. And you get a phone call. Your phone starts buzzing in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And I look down at it. And you see it's Professor Carnot. And I answer it. Anthony? Anthony? Yeah. 
Yeah, Professor Kernop. Have you gone there yet? Yeah. I got your message. Do not go. Wh what? You went? Yeah, I'm here now. You've got to get out of there. Get out of there before they... And the line goes dead. Hmm? Well, guys, that was my mom. Uh, she is not feeling well. Um, and I start backing away towards the ladder. And you know how she is talking about whatnot and who's it's and needs me to move the garbages and all that kind of stuff. And the big man turns, like, kind of lets you by, like, uncertainly, and he looks back to the leader. And the leader says, rise. And you can kind of hear a desperation in his voice. And he goes around all the computers as you're backing away. And he says, this will not end well for you. I'm telling you, you should stay. Uh... We won't force you, but the Lord will have his way in the end. The Lord will have his way in the end. And they're all kind of stepping towards you now cautiously their hands up and I begin and I kind of look towards the ladder look towards them and I, I sort of touch my leg which is I can feel the shooting pain between it and I'm like I already think the Lord's not really one for me and I turn towards the ladder and I hop up and I quickly scamper up as fast as I can no and, and I climb all the way up and I slam the fucking thing as soon as I can yeah, and you can hear the footsteps behind you and people trying to climb the ladder. And, and I'm like, Sam, kind of Sam! Like, I called. I heard your shout. They're going to be here soon, the police. Go, run. Something's fucked up here. And I, and I start running for the front door. Okay. You run to the front door and you bust outside and the rain has started again. Mm. Where do you run? Sam's right behind you. What's going on? What was that? We need to... Uh, I don't know, it's some fucking weird cult shit. Uh, I, I, we need to get somewhere close by. And uh, I, where? I, I don't know. Uh, where are we? What part of town are we at? We're in the north. There's mostly, it's just this strip and then a road for a while and forest. Hmm. To the forest. As much as I don't for want to be in the forest. Why? Why don't we just wait for the cops? I don't... I think something's fucked up here. I feel like they're gonna be... I think they're gonna be here before the cops get here. And you get a text. And I check it. So you start walking towards the forest as you're checking your phone. And it's from Harple. Yeah. It just says, where are you? What time is it? Eight. Eight o'clock. He should still be in the movie. And I just text back. I say, why? And you see, message has been seen by Harple. And no reply. Well, who is that? What, what do they want? It's Harpool. He's asking where I am. No, something's, something's off about this. Yeah, fucking right. Something's off. You don't want to stay for the cops? No. No, something, something, I don't think. Sam, give me your phone. Why? Just give me your phone. And she passes over her phone. And I take my phone and I throw them both into the water. What the fuck are you doing? <sighs> something's, something's tracking us. Something seems weird about this. Come on. And we head, and I head into the woods. Uh, this is fucked. I don't want to go into the woods. We've got... We've got to figure this... I, I, I don't want to go in there. I'll wait for the cops. Listen, I, these people, I went down in the basement, just come on, and I start, and I tell her what I saw. There were ten computer terminals all wanting to bring back the existence of God or some shit like that. What? Something weird, some AI bullshit, but something they seems off about this. <clears throat> bring back God with computers? I don't know. It, none of it makes sense to me, but... Within seconds, my professor called me and said, get the fuck out of there. And she does not take this shit lightly. 
something about her voice it was terrified and then Harpool he he was in the movie mid movie and then he texted me and I'm explaining this as we're walking into the woods why would Harpool stop the movie to text me where I am where am I well you texted him letting you know letting him know where you were like doesn't it make sense that he would be worried about you halfway through the movie he'd literally get out of Star Wars just to text me an hour later to ask where I am I don't fucking know your friend. I don't think he would. That doesn't seem like him. Something seems off about all this. He said that God would make me punished in some mysterious ways. and uh, I don't know. Let's just go. They're not going to be able to follow us in the woods. Where are we going? I don't know my way around the woods very well. We're going home. I know the way through. We just have to go straight through the other side. This is a short, short walk in the woods. Look, we won't get in that deep. If you want, let's go in a short distance and turn around and we can watch the entrance and see who comes. Okay. And if the cops show up, then we'll come back out. We'll take our phones from the river. We'll, we'll dry them off and we can do it your way. But something about this seems really odd. Okay. All right. Let's do that. I don't want to go in the woods. And so we do that. Yeah, so you guys wait woods. for a bit. And... You see a squad car pull up, and it's just one. And there's a man in the front, and you can't really make out what he looks like in the, through the window, but he just stops in front of the place. His lights aren't even on, and after a moment, he drives off. And Sam jumps up and says, wait, wait, no, what are no, you no, doing? No. That's fair. What would we have told them anyway? That there's fucking crazy people down there? Yeah, but I, they didn't do anything crazy. I have to think what this through. What do you through. mean? Didn't they threaten you? They did, but like with a weird threat. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't overtly, it was just, something just seems odd about this. Okay, well, I want to go home. Yeah, they didn't know you came with me. You should go home. I don't think I should go home, though. No. Why not? I don't know. They knew my name. They knew how to hack me. There's no reason they wouldn't know where I live and, and how to get in. Well, maybe you can come back to my place. Maybe my parents will let you in. I'm no, no, I'll, I, I won't. I'll, I'll go to Ben's. He keeps a cot for me nights when we're doing night work. It's no problem. Right. I need to well, think about um, this anyway. And he's the least tech person I know, so no one will be able to track me there. Look, here, sorry about your phone, but I feel like it's safer. And I pull out a piece of paper, and I write down Ben's number on a card, and I hand it to her. If you need me, call me on his landline. Okay. And, um, uh, and uh, give me your house number, actually. I'll call you there tomorrow morning. Are you home tomorrow, or are you at school? I'll be home. Okay, let me just think about this overnight, and then, and, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Okay, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Okay. And um, she turns away for a second, but then she turns back in the rain and hugs you. She throws her arms around you and says, "Be careful, okay? This has really got me freaked out. I, I don't know. The, the past couple days have just been weird, Anthony." Yeah. Me too. Let's, I'll let's talk go. To you tomorrow. Well, I'll take you home. We'll go home together. Okay. And so you lead her back down the streets. You walk for about half an hour and you get back into her suburbs. And um, you barely walk um, along the way, or you barely talk along the way, rather. Um, and what is it looking now? What's the weather looking like? So the this rain has stopped and now the moon is out, very bright, and it's illuminating sort of the, the streets in this sort of like sharp blue light. And it's reflecting off the pools of liquid that I've collected after the rain. And it's sort of bottom lighting our faces as we walk quietly through. And we eventually get to her place, and I hug her again, and I look to her, and I say, just, 
just sit tight and let me think about this and I'm I'm gonna head to Ben's tonight and I'll call you there in the morning okay okay Okay. stay safe I will and I leave her house and I start heading home and as I do I'm thinking about everything that's transpired the the people in the in the hoodies or the black hoods and the burnt basement and it's just something sits off it's not overtly evil it just seems so obtuse and dark and as I enter the ravine towards Ben's house I'm sort of distracted with these thoughts and I'm heading down the stone path thinking about the voice that man had and the and the voice next to him about me not understanding and the large man behind me and the glow the blue glow of the monitors and how they tracked me and before I realize it I'm standing in the ravine again you are but the mist has expanded now and you've been kind of looking at the ground and as you look back up it's kind of clear around you but there's mist everywhere else you can hear the ravine trickling beside you and I start hyperventilating it reminds me so much of my dream and I slowly start pushing on towards the other side and as you're walking, I was picturing you walking like along the ravine. Yeah. Other yeah. side of the ravine, I mean, like. Yeah. So you make it across the ravine. Oh, other side of the. Other like, side of the valley, sorry. Gotcha. Is what I mean. yeah, so you're walking, walking. Yeah. you're walking along the ravine, and what are the thoughts going through your head to keep yourself composed? That the nightmares I have are just nightmares, that the trees are just trees, that everything is oh, all right. Are this is the real world N- you know there's no f- nothing this is just me and my own fear what about bears no no bears there's no bears around here and that's when you hear it a low rumble and it reminds you of the sound that you heard in your last dream while you're sleeping last night a low rumbling sound that sounded almost like a growl. My blood it's just runs in your head? cold. This is in my head. This has to be in my head. And you continue walking. Resolved by the fact that it is just in your head. And then you hear footsteps on the other side of the ravine. And I stop. <coughs> and I look towards the mist and it stops whatever the sound was and it sounds like it's right across from you this time when you hear again this time definitely not in your head and all the color drains from my face and the next thing you know, you're running. As fast you're as running as fast as you can br- through branches and breaking trees and stumbling every now and then. And you're running along the ravine and you can hear whatever this thing is running along the opposite side of the ravine. Pretty much keeping pace with you, but for <coughs> some reason not going through the ravine. <laughs> running as fast as I can. Tears are streaming down my face as I'm like trying to desperately make it through the ravine. And the ravine takes a bend and you veer left. Um, As you can hear it, it's right beside you on the other side of the ravine, only 10 feet away. And then as the bend stops, whatever it is, you run off and disappear towards the junkyard and as I break from the ravine towards the junkyard I look back wiping the sweat from my forehead again tears down my face knowing that something lives within those woods and something that wants me and we're going to end it there
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was chapter one of Basilisk. Huge round of applause for Justin for putting on such a fantastic game. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this. So good. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. That's. Uh, I'm glad we did it chapters and tried not to fit everything. Try not to movie. rush it. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm really excited. A lot of good character building in this episode, so I'm excited. Excited yeah. to see what happens and what we can branch off. Okay, I am tired, so end game post. Let's do this. Who do you think? I guess you weren't looking that much at the stream. I was not looking at all. Um, did you have any ideas? Lots. Uh, I'm thinking Bjorn's always really, really good. Mr. Willie joined a little bit late, but he was being pretty good too. Carly was great, but she won mid game. Um, ah, let's give it to Bjorn. Bjorn doesn't get it all that often. He gets all my praise, but not, but not the XP all the time. Not so well done, XP. Bjorn. You win Endgame Bjorn. XP. Yay! Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the game. Thank you to Justin for running such a fantastic game. And, uh... And uh, it seems like they really enjoyed it, so I'm glad we got to do Good. it. Uh, that is it from us. Uh, it's going to be a quick ending, I guess. Hope you guys have a fantastic evening and a fantastic weekend. And as Justin always likes to say... Oh, what, me? Yes. Oh. Uh, uh. That's Good it. night, That's everybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>